Hello there, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Numenera Erevan here on Girls Run These Worlds. We are here for our eighth session, episode eight, where lands crackle and rage. As our group has uh, been uh, going through an interesting time, some of us a little bit more than others. Some of us are having, you know, terrible, uh, nearly traumatic flashbacks to a previous existence where we made decisions that we sort of agree with and also don't want to think about. 
Some of us are trying to find a parent. Two of you are trying to find a parent, parental unit, or an ancestor. One of you is becoming a machine, mm -hmm. or an eldritch entity machine, or a host for two of them. Uh, and, you know, I'm just here. It's it's pretty great. <laughs> but for those of you uh, who are new to uh, this series, uh, fantastic to have you here uh, near the tail end of our series, as this is, like I said, the eighth of ten sessions that we're going to be having. So we after this, we are 80% of the way through, folks. We are... Oh boy, we're getting near some very big emotional moments. But before we get into that, I'm going to let my fantastic cast introduce themselves. Going to go around the overlay that you can see on the screen. So we're going to start, as always, with the magnificent and uh, amazing Torin. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Torin, or Torin Talks Creativity on the Internet. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. I am playing Cadix, the curious plug imports nano who talks with machines who's doing great she's you know pronounce she her she's great no regrets and, no regrets yep no regrets and uh we will not need to reiterate any sort of uh plot points that have happened at any given point regarding uh her character uh carrying on with uh the impressive and so, so cute <laughs> in expressions no help go jesus mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Noelle, she, her, I'm playing Errol, also she, her, and Errol is a, um, she's a lot of things at this point. Uh, she's a glaive, uh, who's cheerful and who rides the lightning and controls the tides. She's got these two nice little gloves that are a fashion statement and slowly taking control of her. Um, and she's just excited to be here and slowly lose herself to an onslaught of uh, pain and grief. Sounds like a lot of my 20s. It's great, folks. But uh, carrying on. <laughs> I'm in my 20s. So how do you think I feel? <laughs> uh, it gets better. I promise you. But they said that when I was a teenager. <laughs> They keep saying well, that. Yeah, well, they say it about 20. You will care after. less when you hit 40. You will care less when you hit 40. I you don't will... care now. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going around with Alex, who's currently losing their shit. Take it away. Oh, my God. They said that when I was a teenager. It's wild. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alex. I use they, them pronouns. I am playing Enoch, who is a mystical nano who possesses a shard of the sun, and he uses he, him pronouns. Fantastic. And last but not least, she's back, everybody. The amazing woman herself. She's returned. I was so glad to have her back. Take it away, Vivi. Hello. So I miss y'all. Like, Gaudian was amazing, but I miss y'all. Uh, I am Vivi, and I am playing Jinx, who is an intelligent delf who explores yesterday, and she's very much sick of everybody's shit. Not that I know what everybody's shit is, but y'all let me know. Fantastic. And for those of you who uh, do not know who I am, hi there. My name is Angela Lemos Mugrebejo. I use she, they pronouns. And uh, I am the world crafter slash GM uh, facilitator for this game. So I am essentially the person who's just introducing moments of uh, great emotional turmoil and occasionally once in a while throwing a, an unholy abomination from sci-fi Eldridge Abyss. And uh, it's, too, it's Friday. That's what you do. Yes. I can make the noise again if you want to if you want to curl back, Vivi. I still remember your <laughs> Yes. I'm taking that as a GM victory. The player is afraid of me. <laughs> but in actuality, <laughs> folks, we are gonna be jumping into this uh real quick with uh a recap that'll be a little bit more extensive for the sake of keeping uh Vivi in the loop and also because uh as I've been doing for the past few sessions especially a lot of the area that this group is in deals heavily with natural disasters so this can include but is not limited to tsunamis hurricanes volcanic eruptions earthquakes landslides the kinds of things that i know depending on where you are in the world and you're watching this might hit a little too close to home so we understand if that or if other themes of memory loss grief trauma fairly toxic we're calling them relationships, but it's more like forced partnerships that are not great. 
uh, that are depicted here. Whatever flippancy we have, this has been I'm talked about. I'm noticing all of these are my thing. So no, the memory loss is Cadix. That would that was exclusively. I am mom. also losing the memories from the. Yeah, it's fine. You, you'll be We're not codependent at all. No, 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 no. Are we talking about the cast? Or are we talking about the players? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> But in actuality, folks, in all seriousness, please watch out for yourselves. We understand that if any of these subjects gets a little too close to home and you feel like you need to step away, please watch out for your own well-being first. Uh, this is a cast of primarily like queer and a lot of gender diverse folk who are also at times playing with a lot of uh, dark humor in relation to the different experiences we've had, both uh, being gender diverse people and also uh, with experiences of womanhood that we might do allegorical work with in our storytelling. Bear that in mind. You're also signing up for this because you're here. So do with that what you may. Do with that information what you will. But let's jump into our recap. Uh, so folks, last session we started off with Errol having an interesting conversation with different aspects of herself, really pushing the fact that uh, the literal artifact of grief and sorrow is overwhelmed by the kind of guilt and feelings that it's experiencing while being attached to Errol. And also the lightning glove, who seems to be more a beacon of rage, shall we say, is also not feeling as though Errol is giving full commitment to their arrangement, how shall we say. So Errol's having that fun conversation. The group has managed to make their way uh, through the main crop area, demolishing a pair of uh, very angry bulldog creatures uh, that uh, did have an unfortunate number of tongues that were getting ready to uh, lash out at the party. Oh yeah, you missed a you missed a thing. Oh, one of their tongues can split off into six different tongues. It's a minor thing. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and be fun. It, it, it could have been fun. It could have been fun. But uh, the group managed to make it to the forest region uh, of that se of the sector that they were currently in, found the greenhouse, found it seemingly guarded by a barrier that was not easy to break through until uh, Errol, or rather I should say Noel, did did uh, my favorite thing that happens in a TTRPG where you're like, fuck, I missed, I missed the first roll. Let me try that again. Gets a nat 20 and literally causes Errol to become aware of the fact that the lightning power that she's drawing from, that's not fully the glove anymore. Some of it is her own natural power that is being amplified. In fact, might have always been fully hers, but just got a kickstart with the glove being there. In making their way through to the greenhouse, to the safe section, present within this sector, the group did manage to get Enoch half of the security clearance in order to reset the protocols of the facility and to place it in a state of defense that might be able to keep out any sort of hostile creatures that are currently present. Though not without Cadix being witness to a memory that of seemingly the moment in which she decided to begin the process of reiteration of no longer being Katarina. Which uh, was a lot for Cadix to go through, leaving her to even go to the point of talking with a set of seemingly telepathic creatures that had an unerring perception of time, seemingly knowing some of the things that were about to happen up to a minute later. But the group, having made their way out of the safe house, explored the interior bubbled region of the greenhouse itself, found what appeared to be the experimental dregs and leftovers of past work done with the gloves, mechanical, almost junk, garbage-esque creatures with elemental, elementally aspected aspects to their body of lightning, of fire, of water, seemingly a warning of what Errol could become if she is not able to remove the artifacts from her person soon. But 
And upon being whisked away through that very familiar sucking uh, sensation that got them into this sector, the group has arrived back in the center platform of the entire facility. You now have half of the security clearance. And again, you have some direction of where to go from here. And that is where we pick up. Um, just clarification question for me. Um, mm -hmm. So Caddix gleaned the information that those people were, in fact, research subjects of prolonged glove use, essentially, right? Yes. OK. Uh, and she did not share that. She has plans for this information. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> so and then uh, I was double checking the beacon protocol for the safety stuff for Enoch was in the south flipped the landslides, droughts and storm documentation area yes that is correct that is the other yeah. section and the other information that i believe only caddix has is or rather uh, no i think you've let enoch know as well is that the southern upside down sector enoch's uh not enoch uh ezekiel's uh signature has been detected and in the northern flipped sector Hadija's uh, signature has been detected. Uh, and also, last thing, containment protocol for the hands. I it is let in the, the light Enoch know. Area. Yeah, and I let Enoch know that that exists. Okay, sorry. Lots Can't of touch. secrets. Okay. You have to stay um, up to up to date with your notes, dear. Otherwise, I know. I'm trying. Screwed. It's okay. There's so much. Um. Uh. So. Okay. So I guess we go to the Southern, um, hold on. <laughs> she pulls out of the book. Southern flipped landslides, droughts, and storm documentation area, right? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. I don't know how we get there. Me I need to navigate. Either. <laughs> As a reminder. I... Yeah, go, go, no, go, no, first. Oh, um, just... I can... Try getting us in, however, with the, the zappy zap. Um, well, I mean, we could go back to the beginning. And, I mean, Jinx could probably get its help there, right? And then, like we did with the greenhouse <laughs> barrier, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Penthos. Errol. Penthos, who, as a reminder, is your uh, insectoid gem-encrusted companion who has had a time, uh, has a severely scarred right portion of, of her body as a result of uh, Errol's actions. Um, yes. Yes. How, how do you, um, uh, uh, do you know how we get down? Cadet, can you talk about this? I really, I feel like they really oh. don't care for me after I yeah. scarred them for life yeah. and I'm right here. Cadex is just like patting your arm, like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm totally good at this. <laughs> Penthos. Um, and yes. Have you been to any of the other portions of the center? Um, as far as I can tell, um, I don't, I, I don't personally recall ever being there. I okay. actually remember the club having um, spoken to me of wanting to get there. Oh, the glove wanted to go? I, it, it was what I was interested in. Did it say why? No, I... I oh, wait, I can talk to the gloves. The doy. Um, Thanks, mm -hmm. Panthos. Hey, fluffy butt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, he doesn't look like he was lying to me, right? No. Panthos? Okay, good. Okay. Hi. Like, Ask the club. like as far as you remember, Penthos just d Penthos' relationship with with his previous glove was just unlike this. Unlike this, get the <laughs> fuck off of me, please. I don't uh, like this. This is any pronouns, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Gave he she they, but use it responds to any. Uh, it has a preference for anything gender neutral, but we'll you we'll take any. Fluffy butt, fluffy butt, fluffy oh. butt. Mm. Was it fluff? Hold on, fluffy butt. And what was the other one? Junior. You, I, Enoch, Jane, do either of you 
I think it was Junior, actually. I think it was Fluffy but Junior, but that was previously <laughs> Synthos's club, so it might answer since it Fluffy but Fluffy but Junior. Mm. How do we get to the southern area? Uh, so southern flipped. The southern landslide flipped. droughts and storm documentation. Landslide droughts and storm documentation. You would have to. You would have to flip the facility. I would think the naming of uh, the particular region would have made that clear. How do we do that? We have to flip the facility. I, I'm oh. doing the thing where, like, I I'm holding it up to my hand and I like turn to the side and I'm like, we have to flip the facility. Like oh. someone who's on the phone. <laughs> uh, does the glove know we have to leave first? Because what I had before was rotation protocol, navigate protocol, security nexus core. Do we have um, to? How, how can you just give this? Give us the play by play on how we can do that. Wrote you activate the rotation protocol. The sector will flip and will now respond uh, in entering it as the new location it has been flipped to. Like, do you have to oh, leave sorry, to do the rotation. Yeah, I, no, I'm you don't. Saying this You've already had access to this being on the central platform you're currently stationed on. Oh, so we can do it right now. Yes. Uh, Enoch. <clears throat> yep. Everybody's sick of our shit. <clears throat> can, you, can you rotate? Uh, there's There should be a rotation protocol somewhere um, where we can flippy flip. Flippy right. Dip. So I can try. Is that, Caddix, is that a thing you would understand how to do? Um, is it a machine not thing? I okay. could ask For a reminder, machine. you did find this in the previous session, hon. I did find it! <laughs> but no, the flip protocol, I talked to it. You talked to it, and it asked you whether you wanted yeah. to do it or not. And gotcha. you said no at this time, because, uh, this time because, because we going when, when you were going to it, you specifically, the sector for the first half of it said not flipped, or it yeah, didn't yeah. mention being flipped. Okay, no. Are we back at the very beginning? Or are we back? You're in the, the center beginning? platform. That's where. That's where when you exited the greenhouse and it sucked you in, it popped you right back in that right. central platform that could go north or south, which okay, are relative sorry, directions as a reminder. Again. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> hold on. Um, computer accessing user verified. Thank you. Could you please initiate rotation protocol? Rotation protocol will now be initiated. Please stay clear of all relevant areas. Wait, what are the relevant areas? I have no idea. <laughs> so, you know, I've described previously that the oh, no. entire oh. temple itself is like an hourglass shape. Mm -hmm. So one sort of mm -hmm. like pointed uh, with the bottom pointing this way and the other one with the top pointing this way. Mm -hmm. uh, also, important question. Did you do flip no north or south? It didn't ask. South, it just said right? it was south because the so, southern flip sector is where you needed to go. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought you'd ask me if it said that. No. So, yes. No. So, uh, we would like to have southern flipped rotation for landslides, droughts, and storm documentation area. You watch as, again, so. You've had the, the bottom half of an hourglass shape, right? Where the water that you can see from the outside, it kind of has that weird, it, it has like, an, uh, like a, a snow globe kind of effect in terms of the shape and the dome aspect to it. You watch as the entire thing just rotates to be upside down. And you also watch as the water from what you can see remains in place. Like from the outside, like any orientation that should logically have happened from, you know, physics kicking in and everything in the interior that should have dropped has not changed whatsoever. Hmm. What Computer, is... turn off clipping. <laughs> <laughs> Low latency mode. All right. Uh... <laughs> now, in, now initiated. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Computer, God mode, God mode. <laughs> error, error, initiate, initiate doom eternal destruction mode. <laughs> so, this will be fine. So, you also see that now 
there is a oh, no. oh we drove Alex away. <laughs> <laughs> Alex was like sorry. Oh. No, the protocol took Alex first. <laughs> to the rest of you. <laughs> you, all, you all thought it's... this was a TTRPG stream. No, this is a this is the sequel to whatever the the fucking like uh video chat horror movie is it was entirely filmed on people oh, doing oh, yeah. 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 Nothing like yeah. that's ever done. I didn't sign up for that. Reminder. You're good. So, Funny so joke. Everything, not here. Yeah, so everything's rotating, right? Mm -hmm. Um so, go, ahead. go ahead. So you're watching also now is that there appears to be a path of water and rock that is now slowly forming pointed downwards, but you do know in your past experience that when you tried to walk forward, your body's just kind of adjusted to be the correct orientation. So it's a path of water and rock that is going down. Though you suspect if you probably, if you do the exact same thing where you walk backwards or walk forwards in the direction of that path, your bodies will just adjust orientation. Hmm. Well, Theoretically, it worked, we, right? In we go? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's um, get going. Let's get inside so we can do the rest of the security protocol stuff. Yeah. How, you know, how would you feel if I just tried to zip us past any sort of security stuff so we can just get you in there? Uh... Well, is there security stuff that, like, it, w walking up to the landslides, droughts, and lightning storm documentation area, is there, like, stuff that, is, can I do, like, a perception check? Is that a thing I let can me, do? Let me ask you a question. Let me start with the first more important question. Uh -oh. Have you walked onto the path yet? Yep. I oh, have. Yeah. I absolutely have. <laughs> so yeah. you see ahead of you on the path formed of water and rock, once again, the little weather bots start going by. And now you see some of them are positioned quite high above the actual. Directions will sound really weird when I describe them, but you are they are positioned high above the path, which, if you're still on the platform, is very below you. Mm. It will not make sense. But relative to your path, they are above you. And you see that at different points, some of them are sparking electricity. And you also see that there are a few different, there are a pair of bots that are beginning to go at different spots along the path and just tunneling through them and drilling it and causing them to fall apart. Okay. Mm. Oh, Lance. Totally safe, totally safe. <laughs> I yeah. can take a few of these out if we need it. Um, I don't think we have to. If I need to, I can turn them off and on, but I think if we just go slow like we did before, we'll probably be okay, right? Yeah. We should and they be have okay. Max, max safe boots? Like, you know, oh, have... yeah. We do have the little. The but little we did forget one. I don't know if they're here. You would have, the boots are still in the compartment, but there is nothing of that sort here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, that's my suggestion. If I have to, I can turn them on and off. How far um, away is it? Yeah, the it, it's farther than long distance. Is this it is two a... long distances away? I'm gonna say yes, but I'm afraid as I'm saying yes. <laughs> Enoch, do you yes, want to ride some lightning with me? Fuck it, why not? Woo! Ball, we go lightning. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this is yeah. gonna burn through. Oh wait, no, I have edge, so this isn't gonna burn through my intellect points. Uh, Cadix, Jinx, mm -hmm. we'll be fine. Are you sure? Yeah, Jinx can okay. find. I'm just gonna go in and turn it off and let them come in. We'll just come It'll right back fine. out. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything in there, I'll take care of it. Okay. Great. Love you guys. Bye. Be careful. <laughs> um, as, once they're gone, uh, Cadex is going to grab Jinx. Um, I should probably update you on some things. Yeah. Yeah. She just makes sure that she keeps her eye on them as far as she can mm -hmm. see. 
yeah, so, yeah. We'll you know, also... like, I'm, I'm, I'm listening, but let's keep my eye on those two. Yes, please. Um, but I, uh, I'm kind of worried about Errol, and we've really got to fix something. I have an idea. I don't know if it's gonna work, but uh, yeah, I'm all in. We got to fix that for sure. And if we can fix that without chopping both her arms off, that would be great. Oh, I have no idea if it takes that, but <laughs> um, at least something for the hands, the gloves. Penthos, don't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Put your fingers in your ears. Doesn't have ears. Well, I'm okay. Just cover them up. Just Penthos, just, you're like, muted. Make noise. <laughs> I'm kidding, Penthos. You can join in. <laughs> um, Is Kenneth saying it in that tone? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, she might. She might. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right. I'm going to gently invoke the GM prodding, uh, GM prodding of get on with it by invoking my favorite Monty Python moment of going, get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Get on with it. Uh, do we want to resolve Shum first or Chet first? Do. Uh, if you're spending it, they're all the fucking way on the other side, mm. which is very weird. I, I want to add uh, for Enoch, the experience is kind of exhilarating and weird, but mm -hmm. also the moment you get to the other side, uh, you can see like if you outstretch your hand like above you, mm -hmm. you could very easily interact with the snow water snow globe uh, that is the upturns the flipped sector. Great, I, I touched the water snow globe. You are immediately pulled in. Damn it. Damn it. I... <sighs> okay. I, so wait, wait, wait. I have a thing I could do here. Is this uh -huh. water snow globe the only thing that we can interact with? Yes. Okay. Never mind. I'm not gonna do the thing. Oh, so there's nothing else in this room. There's no like there's no of room. Sunlight you just have a pathway that takes you to the outside of this. You're on the outside of the actual sector itself. Like, oh, so I can touch it and go in. Yes, as far cool. as you're aware. Yeah. Okay. Could I? This might be a stretch, and if it is, let me know. Can mm -hmm. I manipulate the water to stretch across the path? It is. And grab it, 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 it is a massive amount of water we're talking like an actual full-on like recycling like irrigation plants worth of water you do not have the capacity to manipulate that much water well not all of it at once i'm saying like stretch out a limb basically like so tap us to suck us in basically yeah, like like reach out a little a branch to them. I mean, you don't know where they are anymore. The moment that you've touched it, Errol, you're now in another contained room. Mm -hmm. Ah, beans. Too late. Also, Enoch is not there with you right now. Ah, double. Oh, beans. I touched the thing and went inside. Enoch is not with you. <laughs> yeah, Enoch. Hello, darling. I was so scared. It, it's all good. This is what happens when we touch things we oughtn't touch, right? Um, are well, we just in the room? There's no, we can't see the water snow globe or anything anymore? You don't see anything outside of you. Like you're just in another contained room. Is there like the little uh, bulbs of sunlight like there was in the other room? Actually, okay. no, 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 no. Sorry, I started nodding because I was just like, that was my I'm thinking face. And then I realized, wait, no, people will interpret that as a response to, to your question. No, no. As far as you can tell, the only thing you're experiencing and can notice in this room is just like walls that are enclosed that are about 10, 15 feet high. Um, and like also, to... also, I will say the room is starting to oh. feel extremely hot. Yep. Drought. <sighs> Great. This is fantastic, actually. Um, we need Caddix and Jinx. Speaking of, back to the other group, because you've <laughs> chosen to split the party. I was, was going to grab them. I was going to grab them. 
What can happen, um, right? Right. Um, Jinx, so... I'm assuming we're kind of slowly Wait, do we still carefully. have the Scythe Blink? I think I'll... I think... Oh, uh, like I haven't taken a. Those? We haven't taken a rest yet, but I can like bop it to whomever for the next seven hours. Has it been seven hours? It has not been seven hours. It has been okay. two hours. It has not been seven hours. Okay, um, but I think you would still need to be within long distance of me. Uh, are you guys in long distance? They are not within long distance. They are. Wait, okh- wait, I think in- you have to be within long distance to set it up. You can be however far apart you need. No, the oh, you need to be in short distance to set it up. Sorry, it would it, it's two way long range communication, but they're uh, not in long range anymore. Yeah, no, they're uh, you are effectively in your own microcosm of existence right now. Great, Woof. um, Jinx. So, okay, you know those monsters we saw before that were like trash people, and then they had like. Like not trash people. I'm sorry, people made of trash. Um, yes. and then they had like firearms. Um, I'm pretty sure, like more than sure, that those were test subjects that were left here, and they wore what the were they arms, testing? the 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 gloves. Oh. I I didn't want to tell, Errol or Enoch yet. Um. Yeah. That might be a good choice for now. We should probably Um, do that after. Yeah. And now, I did tell Enoch this, and I haven't told Errol, and I don't think I should, but I was going to ask you first. This place has containment things for the gloves. Because they were testing them, right? You know? Take them on and off people. Okay, do we have any any more than just containment? Because I would like to not put Errol in the box for the rest of her, her life. Uh, now, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know if it's for the person or if it's just for the gloves. Um, did, but Did it say uh, anything about where they keep it or where we can find more information on it? I'm assuming the Nexus Core, if we can get there, will tell us. Or I could, pro- you know, try to sneakily find a way. Um, but... There were some last known locations for Adisha and Ezekiel in here. I don't know if they made it out. I mean, I want to know that anyways, but um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is a little, little much, but uh, we definitely got to do what we got to do to keep, keep Errol safe. And Errol might not um, be making the best decision when both of the gloves well, start fighting about whose body this is. And and honestly, I, 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 <laughs> if they make her happy, I don't want to take them. But at the same time, I don't know, Enoch kind of, I don't know if they're really happy, you know? Remember, safe, healthy, happy. Uh, I so mean, oh, like, okay. first, then healthy, then happy. Can't well, be happy without being 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 safe, safe and healthy. Those two come first. But, I mean, depending on no, how. No, I don't want to make her unhappy good. either. No, like, no, I'm know. just saying, like you know, she could learn how to control. I don't know. Like no one really knows, and it takes a long time. But with both of them, I think it's probably sped up the timeline. I don't know, but I. Even if we don't want to do anything with it, we still got to find out the information. Because you know, if yeah, of course, to help to be, stay themselves, then you know, got to know all of that. But we probably might want to do that when the gloves can't overreact to the information. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how, but I figure we probably have to get them either separated or convince Errol to separate themselves from it. Right. I don't know if she would, but information first. Okay, sounds information good. first, and then and then we 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 can see, you know, because that is a, normally an arrow decision unless you know it involves other people's safety and health. Hmm. I know. Okay. Got to deal with some big feelings there, but let's find out the information first. No, we don't. We tackle, tackle no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was talking about you. I'm talking about arrow. Oh, right. <laughs> that is his motto, right there. <laughs> 
No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Thought... No. <laughs> no okay. feelings, just living. Yeah, I mean, you know. mango is happy, right? <laughs> but I, I get your point. Anyway, I, I thought you would. Well, let's put it this way: I think you would make a better decision than me. So, I wanted to ask. Yeah, it, and you know, the information will be important one way or another. Yeah. Also, um, okay, <laughs> talk about, I don't know, happy things. Um, I also got Hiram's journal on purpose so that if you wanted to see what he was up to the last bit that he's been gone, I have it. Ooh, that's evil. A little bit. A little bit. Maybe let happy, about, though. Let, okay. let, me, let me think about that one. Okay. But I'm not just quite sure if, if, I, if I want to snoop or if I maybe should ask first. Well... He did trade it to me, so I don't feel like it's not without his consent. Yeah, but you know what? That that would be just just like like him to try and avoid talking about it. It's like just just hey, I give give that to Cadex so Jinx can read it, and I never have to deal with it. Nope. Well, we are filling it with other stuff, so I could just make it really weird drawings and give it back to him, just as a small uh, little revenge. Yeah, you hear a voice in the wind. Yes. <laughs> Malicious compliance. I camera, mean, like, I am... Oh, good. No, I was just going to say, camera cuts over to hear him over, to hire him over in the other research facility, and he looks up from his books. Oh, son of a... I forgot! <laughs> 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 but yeah, I put drawings, you know, normal stuff, like all the information and everything we found, and updates, blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> but we could put some really stupid drawings in it, too, so that way he has to look at it, and just make it, like, oh, super important, and then he just has to keep reading it. And it makes no sense. And at the end, just, <laughs> just kidding. I mean, um, I would put something at the end, but but it, it has, has to be something that really is not important. Tell oh, yeah. Think. No, no. I mean, I think we just string them along for a bunch of pages. And then at the end, reveal it's not that important. But then, like, just getting half of this was good. So you should go back and read that part. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Let's do it. it this, this is your make your own adventure book. I think that'd be good. And plus, he's not here, right? He, so it'll be like, oh, it's Research Center 3 stuff. It's super important. Yep. <laughs> so what were they doing? What are you guys doing over there? Oh, we were just thinking about shit to mess with you. I mean, you know, <laughs> Errol might be taking over buying Malevolent Entity. Uh, you know, uh, they just lightning bolted in qu square into another dimension. But mm -hmm. hey, let's fuck with Hiram. We're good at that. We I mean, yeah, to, like, it would make me and you happy, Errol right? And Eon laying on the ground, dead, just completely. By the way, folks, while you're trying to make your way along this path, I will say I, I will need I will need there's two tasks to accomplish to get through to the other side safely. One of you has to pick out the right timing to actually make the steps because remember it's a road that is slowly at different spots having either as you watch it and try as you step onto the road lightning bolts from the small little robots floating above it are striking down at different spots so one of you needs to try and work out the timing for that and which spots will still actually be safe from the other little drilling robots and one of you has to lead, has to give the okay and do the actual physical movement to make sure that the other one knows the right spots to go. Um, Penthos, do you think you could help us? Um, yes, I, I, I think under the bus, under <laughs> the bus. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can is... always find the way and navigate, but you know, <laughs> then somebody else got to watch where I'm stepping. I will say, if Penthos could watch and then you help us navigate, I can turn it on and off the machines when we need to if we really screw up. Okay. I will say that that falls under a difficulty. Let's go with, it is a intellect task to, to read it correctly. It is an intellect task of three. Of three difficulty. Um, is that for Jinx or Penthos? That's, that is going to be for Penthos. Okay. Penthos <clears throat> is trained actually in delving into dangerous areas as Woo! they 
as they were what's known as a storm rider, folks who literally used to go out and ride the storm tsunamis in the southern region. Nice. Because uh, they are a doormat and they have friends who make bad decisions. Yeah, I feel like this is slowly <laughs> becoming our Jerry from like Parks and Recreation. Not Jerry. <laughs> oh, okay. I want you to know, Penthos, on a difficulty of three task, rolled a 10. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> so Penthos is able to determine the right timing. So this was going to be a difficulty four speed task. Somebody. Me too. One of you, one of the okay. two of you, difficulty three speed task. If you feel there is something within your trainings and skill sets that are relevant, by which I mean I'm asking Jinx because I know that Caddix is currently shitting herself. It's not good. It. It's not good. Plus, remember, I, I'm still down I a just lot. Updated herself, but I do have find a way. Um, which is oops. Tell, telling me, telling me, where is it? No, there. And I, and I apply effort to a navigation task. Don't know the way I lost or attempting to blaze a new route. Need to choose between two or more otherwise similar path. Get a free level of effort. So yeah. if I not navigate, I, I I'll be able to get one free level of effort. Yes. So after Penthos, I use one. After you use one, yes. So here's the deal. Uh, Penthos getting correctly on that automatically drops this level four task to a level three. If you and and I'm trained in navigation. It. You're trained in navigation, so that drops it to a level two. So if you spend right. a level of effort, that'll drop it to one, and then because of find the way, that would drop it to zero, so you will know exactly. So if you're willing to spend the points for effort, it's speed, remember. Yes, but but it is is uh, three, and then I have edge of one, so it's two. Uh, not not edge. It's edges cost of abilities is how it is what oh. it reduces as a oh, reminder. I got effort. It's I been got... a minute since I've had to remind people. Wait, but doesn't edge reduce? No, I'm I'm about to instant transmission over there and poke you in the head. All right, so 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 I I spend three points to get add one effort. Yes, so so it's three points for one effort, unless you have an edge in that, which will reduce the cost for effort. Edge is just what applies to reducing costs for whatever task. Yeah, that's what I mean. So so it would be three one. So it's two. I got to. So it's two. two. So you would spend two for so one effort, which would drop it to a one, and because of find the way, that drops it all the way down to zero. Yes. So I will, do we use so speed do often? I don't normally call for speed stuff because speed stuff is normally like uh, do this fast, stealth, those sorts of things, and all of you keep finding mechanical ways or lightning ways to get around your problems. But now we're we're, we're typically. I never have to you. ask for anything physical or, or or dexterous because you fuckers keep going. But what if I just turn off the machine, or what if I just float or hit it from with somewhere away with lightning? I think. Can I use hedge out. magic? I was gonna say, I think to balance it out, hedge magic should be a speed task. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm pretty good at speed, so that wouldn't be a problem. So, carrying forward in the narrative, which is slowly unraveling out of my control as fast as we can manage it. So, Jinx doesn't even have to roll now. No, Jinx doesn't even have to roll because I don't even need the plus one from from you. Nope. Yeah. So, you navigate, and <laughs> Jinx, it 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 is walk in the park this as terrifying as the whole just everything around you is the for you this this isn't any harder than combing through a cavern going through a catacomb going through anything else like the details may have shifted but the core of it is the same this is your domain as far as exploration make it through the well, other <laughs> There's even a moment where two, I, I'm imagining just because this is my association with Jinx as a character, that like you step at the wrong moment and the two little bots are about to come in and drill and you just look at them like, no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you just get the teacher voice. You just go, are we going to behave? <laughs> the two bots just go. <laughs> Reconsider. That's what I used to say, say to the toddler. Reconsider that. <laughs> no, but you make it to the other side, and you see again. It is, it is very strange. Like you have essentially an upside down snow globe orb in front of you, with water that, if you were to pass through whatever this like outside barrier membrane thing is, you could 
it would feels like you could directly touch the water. Okay, it looks so like we're... the last thingy that they touched. Yep. Or we touched. Okay. And Another we do not see them here. You do not see them there. Um. I wonder if they're gonna touch it. I hope they don't. I hope they're smart enough to know not to do that. Like, I, I know. I know that Errol touched is within two seconds. So. Oh, of course. Um, I was just curious if there was like, should we ask the computer before we touch it? Are they in long range now? Oh, I imagine this is like phasing to other areas around the place. I mean, kind of how I'm just, viewing just it. Go yeah. ahead. I mean, it can't hurt. There, okay. Jinx and Caddis <laughs> are some of the wait, smartest talk. people I know. Wait, wait, wait. Is the going ahead for talking to the machine or touching it? Talking, talking to the machine, the I'm machine. assuming. Yeah. I, is there is there a I panel love the idea of Caddis being like, oh, go ahead, touch okay. it. Okay. Then... <laughs> <laughs> it is, like, it is like another floating platform that like you could integrate your own machinery into Caddix. And if the moment that you do. Access granted. Subject, Katerina Kubito. Welcome back. What would you like to know? Stop, stop damn naming me. <laughs> Did someone access you very recently? Subject, Adisha. Accessed area and panel. Short while ago. I'm gonna look at Jinx. It says Kadisha did it. I don't. Can can I, uh, a short while ago? Can 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 we like specify that a little bit more? Can you give me a visual? Four hours ago. What did she do? Access to to location granted to assistant high researcher Hadisha. Access to landslides, droughts, and lightning storm documentation era granted. Initial reception area bypassed. Bypass protocol can be invoked with proper security clearance. Researcher update made. Researcher Cadex. Do you wish to enter? Landslides, drought, and lightning storm documentation sector. Computer, is security protocol active now? Security protocols have not been dis disabled. Security protocols in lightning storm area currently in effect. Surviving population present within lightning storm documentation region currently under threat. Okay, now real quick. Cadex has never done this. It's only Enoch that can do that, right? Like disable security stuff. <clears throat> Correct. Um, so GM quick question. In my mind, I was thinking that above table that they are like stuck in another area. Like they haven't made it all the way through, have they? They are in uh, a, a containment room, much like the other, the northern side. The water. Same thing. <laughs> speaking right. of, uh, yep. Uh, speaking of Enoch and uh, Errol. It's getting a little hot, I yeah, think. You are Errol starting, starting is to get going to activate shock on her glove, and she's just going to punch the wall. Uh, temper, temper. Uh, Errol's going to activate shock on her glove again and punch the wall again. Okay, can we lightning, don't need to lightning phenomenon detected? Containment measures now put into effect. Wait, what? Enclosure of lightning testing zone must be activated. Girl, what the hell did you do? There this is, is why I quick touching stuff. You actually Damn. watch as it's. If you know pink chewing, uh, like bubble gum, like that kind of color, there is like a rubbery substance that begins to coat the entirety of all of the walls and repair the sections 
that have been broken down by Errol's attack. Could... Oh. I hate Pepto-Bismol foam. Okay. I've got flubbers, <laughs> so... Could, uh, could I roll a quick check? Yes, what are you looking to do? I would like to see how much damage I would need to do to one of these walls to crack it open. I would put that into, like, task four. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll just do that. Um, and what is it for? That's 12. a 16? It's 12. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's okay. Three. Then a 14 gets it. You would need to do a severe amount of damage to break through this wall. Like, this, this is very much a thing that is designed specifically to hold something like you, Errol. And given the history associated with this zone in particular, there's probably a reason why they have a lightning specific one beyond just the whole lightning storm documentation. But it didn't count on Enoch being here. Hedge magic, go! <laughs> Don't you punch this wall again. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, while that's happening, by the way, yeah. uh, Enoch, uh, if you want a response to this, I'll tell you in a second. But Cadex, you you hear the security protocols. Warning, lightning phenomenon detected in reception oh, room I area. Have an idea. Okay, so I have a... No, go, sorry, go. Containment measures have now been put into place. So the crack that I've made... I, I've made a full like crack in the wall, right? Mm-hmm. It's being filled in by rubber right I, now. If I can, before it gets filled in with rubber, I would like to put my hand on it and create as much water. Basically, I want to try to like shoot a blast of as much water as I can into this area, into this crack to try to... Okay. Actually, here's what I'll do is I'll do that and then I'm gonna use my ability to change the state so it turns into ice, which will expand even further. Didn't I tell you not to punch this wall? <laughs> no, listen, I'm punching this wall with science. <laughs> you know, gonna wash wash your feet so so you know the dirt falls down out of your ears. Oh god. So that is that is shift the tides you're going for, correct? Mm-hmm. That's three intellect points. Yup. Okay. I I I can swing that. Okay. So Enoch, you will get to have a response after this. Uh, <laughs> one of our chatters going in all caps. Exploit science. <laughs> it's the it's the it's not instead of the Iron Giant guy who's going art. It's just science. <laughs> It's just, it, it's Bill Nye, the science guy, replacing the art guy in that gif and just going, science! But, so, uh, Errol, that is a thing you can do. Okay. As you're going to try and do that, I would like you to tell me what is a horrifying and painful memory that suddenly comes to mind about making a change for others you didn't want to. Errol remembers minutes ago whenever she stupidly touched the wall of a, a snow globe, sucking herself in and getting her and Enoch trapped in this room, slowly filling up with things meant to contain her. And she is worried that she has sentenced Enoch to death with this act. And she is overcome with the guilt and the pain of feeling like she is less than worthless, she is actively detrimental to everyone around her. The ice that you create, it, it's, it, it's almost like if you had like a piece of fabric and you did like a like a sewing needles worth of pinprick through it, there is a hole puncturing through with the ice to the other side. This is not going to last very long. This is very much going to be a might task, and it's going to be a hard one if you want to try and rip through this wall. Enoch? L yes, darling. I'm sorry. Uh, how difficult is this task going to be? 
This is a difficulty five. This is even trained people often fail. So you would need a 15 to do this. Okay. And when my general glaive training do anything for this? I, what skills do you have, Errol? Let's start with that. That's a very good question. Um, I'm in, trained so. in tasks related to making friends, ending conflicts, and making a positive first impression on strangers. <laughs> Not helpful here, sadly. Uh, no, no, no. I'm looking at all my stuff. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything here specifically that would work for this kind of thing. Then this is very much, unless you spend effort, this is going to be a different... I'm burning so much effort here. Okay. Uh, I'll burn six points of might, which will do three levels of effort. Oh, boy. Okay, that brings it down from a difficulty five to a difficulty two, so you only need to roll six or higher for this. Okay. Hey, Enoch. Mm, I think you just see Enoch pacing very slowly behind you. Okay, I'm gonna use a different dice because that's a 14. What the fuck? I have rolled, I rolled two you times before we started session and it was 14 one of those times, so I don't know. I, there, there's sorcery at work in that die. That's all I'm going to say. It's my lucky number. So, this is not the way. Uh, no. I thought I burned that. Uh... I thought I burned that effort. Enoch. Mm hmm. Uh, so, Errol, this is your experience of the event. The ice, like, you, you gain such a strong sense of control over the ice, it almost seems to become part of your body itself. Like you basically have an ice skewer for an arm and punch your way through and rupture a whole section of the wall. And it is like a moment of triumph. At least that's what you're perceiving it as. That's what it feels like. Like you did something right. The thing you're not noticing and what Enoch sees is like, because you spent a lot of effort for that one. When the water drops and fades away Enoch Errol is whatever pain she's not registering is seems very apparent on her body mm. and also the glove is spreading like it's right about elbow connecting to shoulders here it was like up to like about here now, it is now spreading more. Like it's getting worse. And it looks, it. this doesn't look like it's just like the other glove where it's just kind of slowly growing there. This looks painful. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's get through this before it closes up again. Why did you do that? I got us into this mess, okay? There's no mess, Errol. No, oh, I, 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 okay. I know you tried to be kind. I, I do think I did get us into. The room was getting hotter. We were gonna die, and I'm not. All letting we you had die to do is, me. baby. You have. You have to listen. Listen to you telling me not to do the thing that would have gotten us. Do you want no, to just wait I, not just up listen with rubber to me. and then is is the room filling up with rubber or is it just is crawling the on the walls? <laughs> no, the, the wall's been broken down and and Cadex, you you would perceive I the would rain. This is out of character. I do want to taste whatever this like pink rubber stuff tastes I'm like. I'm like very curious, right? like forbidden bubble gum. <laughs> like this, I want my insides to be insulated against lightning. Oh my god! Local woman struck by lightning shrugs it off because <laughs> of her daily diet of 
The texture of virgin and wall me, rubber. Hey, 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 wall view. Oh my gosh. Okay, everybody, we're about to close out the session here. Camera all day. Oh, we got right. folks. Uh, thank oh, you, everybody. We're about to be out. Good night. In character, Earl is like in a very emotionally fraught place. She's blaming herself for this. She thinks that she like felt that moment of power where she was like, I can do this, and that she immediately screwed up again. Out of character, my brain is just pink wall goo, pink wall goo, pink wall goo. <laughs> so in game, Cadex. Yep. You just hear uh the machines talk to you back saying Defensive protocols disabled. Hmm. Well, I was going to turn it off somehow, but okay. Um, please let us through to the research area. Permission granted by High Researcher mm -hmm. Cadex. Can I tell from the like the clips and stuff is it broken it's not broken it's just like the tech the tech here is advanced enough that it doesn't quite have full consciousness but it all it has enough developed sense of itself that it also starts getting habits so it was mm. like oh i'm supposed to call her this it's like nope wait no. okay wait mm. it's 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 the uh, put it let me put it to you this way it's the sound of your relative trying to practice your correct pronouns yeah Marking up every now <laughs> they're and trying one. they're trying <laughs> it's like your name's katarina i didn't say katarina nope um <laughs> then she'll look at pithos and jinx just all right looks like we can go through we won't get stuck in the water thing again <laughs> and you reach your hand there is that sucking sensation but it's it feels more like the way floating there is a sucking sensation yes i said it do y'all yo you want a clip for this sucking <laughs> sensation deal with it you have a chur fucking yeah, i can't even put things up here <laughs> yeah. but, Sadly, yes. i'm giphy within you know 24 hours mm -hmm. sucking uh, sensation there it's the local uh, sucking sensation <laughs> come on come all Addicts will look at Pythos and Jigs and just seem safe at least. I'll go first. As you reach through, it feels less like someone like being like a cane pulling you across a theater stage and more like you're strangely like enclosed in like a bubble of water that feels very cozy and you just whoop, just like float in and you land on the outer region of the sector, which I will describe in a sec, but I will say at the very least, you're on the outer edge of the walls for the room where you see Enoch talking like to Errol. Yeah, with the crack mm -hmm. in it. It looks as though there are remains of ice shards in it. And I assume Jinx and Penthos, when you follow, same thing. You arrive and you see this. Oh, that doesn't look good. Hi! Are you okay? I'm great. You're muted, Jinx. Or, uh, Enoch, sorry. Yeah, we're good, Cadix. How are you okay. guys? Ah, uh, relatively unscathed. <laughs> good. Let's figure out where the hell we are. And... Um. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. Can I do a, fine. like a perception check because also no one can lie to me. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, I would say that. I'm also bad at lying. So. Yes. So, uh, so actually, oh, it's, Enoch's it's not to trying to lie. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so Cadex, it would be normally a difficulty three, but you have training in this, and Errol has an inability, so I'm going to treat that as an asset. So it's a difficulty one. I think it's a difficulty zero. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm thinking as my character. I just want to see something real quick. Roll Torrent. We're testing. Yeah. We're testing, because if you can't be reach three. Nice to be. Oh, it's 11. There you go. Nice. So th this is actually why I wanted to ask. 
Errol, what what is the front you're trying to, to put forward versus what is Caddix actually reading as far as your emotions and vibe right now? Errol is trying to put forward like a very cheerful, chipper, like everything's great. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be with my friends vibe. Um, the vibe that Caddix is getting is that if we were not in a contained space right now, Errol would be like storming off right now. Like she would head out to find something to punch. I think Caddix will just kind of reach her arm in and help y'all out. I'm assuming you're not out of it. Yet. Mm -hmm. um, and when she grabs Errol's hand, if, if Errol will give it. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this was you. It's impressive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how impressive can it be when I'm the one who screwed up in the first place? Hmm. I think I got us into here. the water room first. Yeah. Yeah. But this is just how this place works. I did You didn't say do anything wrong. What can go wrong? I mean... Um, Errol, do you like it? This is a lot of power. Do you enjoy it? Do I like being able to help my friends and defend people that need defending? That's no. not what I asked. I asked you like the power. Because I don't have any power, but I can do all of that. What am I without it? Like Errol. That's not enough. It is to me. Yes, it is. It Shut always up. has been. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, hey, how about we do this? And very quickly, you just see the book, like Hiram's notebook. Remember, remember Jinx? And then she's going to draw like a cartoon version of Errol with like an ice knife and just like, it's so comic book style and over the top and like power lines coming Is out of it. Is it also like, like you're like inkjet printing yet? Yeah, yeah. My hands are going, like, and it's got like the automatic. Yeah, yeah, it's got kapow in it. <laughs> and, like, you know. I mean, does it feel like this? It feels like everything else I've ever done was nothing. In a good way or a bad way? Like, yeah, I'm so awesome. I could do this now because let's give me power or like everything I did before is the worst thing I ever did in my life. I don't know. I... <laughs> let's keep going. Okay. And I, okay, now, okay, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> this is new. I love when Torrent oh. starts doing the, okay, 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 Lily, okay. okay. Well, now here's the thing. I, now, hold on, actually, let me check. <laughs> no, hold on, I gotta check lines and bills. This is actually really important. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Ooh, is there a it's specific... a red yeah. yeah, I was about to say. Or... Wait, my, what well, was my ability? And I have a new ability to mind read. Uh, you are a player here. I'm mind here. control specifically. Mind, mind reading is different. No, no, I have control. No, yeah, I have mind reading. So you can read the surface thoughts of a creature within a short range of you, even yeah. if the target doesn't want mind, to. Mind reading is different. Mind control. Mind control would be full removal of agency of a character. Mind mind reading would just be perceiving the thoughts, which I still want to ask. The, I still think it's worth asking, but it's not an yeah. immediate red. It's a question. I, I for yeah, Errol. I'm fine with it. I oh yeah, I'm good with the Errol. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Then as Errol is walking away, I will attempt to use this new ability that I have found. Uh, my right eye, the one that is mechanic, can I kind of just you know zoom in. And then attempt to, uh, once you establish contact, you read the target's thoughts for up to one minute if you're target out of range, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so it's four intellect points. And I know I ask you every time, but I want to make sure I get this right because numbers are hard for me. So I have an edge in two. That drops it. Oh, sorry, block. intellect. Yeah. Uh, so here's my quick question. 
I took the pill before, like at the very end of last session or towards the end, uh -huh. which gave me plus two intellect for an hour. Time mechanics wise, are we still within that hour or not? Nah? Cool either way. I'll let it slide. This is the last thing I'll let it slide for. Yeah, perfect. I'll put okay. it that way. So what so does that mean? That, so that, that would increase, I believe, your maximum. OK, perfect. Uh, good, because I'm, I'm my resources are low. All right, so um, I have an edge of two. You said it was a four. Or it's four intellect points no matter what. It's four intellect points total. Yeah. Edge drops it down to two. And if you're yep. using essentially the extra, that basically means from your normal pool, nothing. But from your current total right now, it's just two cost. OK. So I just spin that, or do I need to roll? No, you don't need to roll. OK, because that's what the, I was asking. The ability, much like PBTA, this the system works on the principle of what it does is what it says. <laughs> which uh, Errol, uh, this will involve you as well, probably to an extent. Mm -hmm. What are your, what are your immediate thoughts as Cadix after Cadix has reached out and you're trying to keep things going? What's on your mind? You hear just a cavalcade of stupid, idiot, ruthless. Um, you hear one voice that's like very sort of dark and grim. One voice that is like a little like sadder. That's like, you knew you were going to do this. <laughs> You're going to fuck up. And then you hear one voice that sounds exactly like Errol's. It's just, oh, I'm such a fuck up. I can't believe I would do that again and again. Uh, and Errol is standing there with just a pleasant smile on her face. Okay. I will also, at this moment, uh -oh. offer a GM intrusion for you, Cadex. Ooh, yes. Something responds back. To me? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Is that a yes to the intrusion or Oh, no? absolutely. I'm always going to say yes. 100%. Barely have to I mean, me. yeah. <laughs> so, pick who gets the other XP. You get one XP, someone else gets an XP. I will give it to Jinx. Mm -hmm. okay. I want her to wreck shit. This what? Episode. Who is this? Who is trying to get involved here? Damocles, why are you even worried? You know she's already within our grasp anyways. It doesn't matter if anyone tries to get involved. I don't like outside parties being involved. Who are you? I think Cadix. Cadix do. Hi, I'm Cadix. And we're going to get involved. Oh, delightful. The one without a memory. Actually, clarification, I have a... She's going to go on and on. <laughs> I have a memory. It's all in my leg. Now, what I can't do is... The power of info dumping saves it. Yeah. <laughs> no, going to do it. Just totally <laughs> way more than they ever wanted to know. <laughs> So it's rare that I get to use this, so I'm going to take the opportunity to say, the power of autism compels you. <laughs> like like over-enthused autism. <laughs> oh, oh you that actually gets me Yeah. Cadence is fighting in the war for against autism on the side of autism. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Now I'm just imagining the fucking gloves as autism speaks and it are hurting so oh, badly. No. It's, don't worry, the gloves are not as terrible as autism speaks, folks. Can, I'm imagining Aragorn doing like the today is not that day speech, but getting sidetracked yeah. in the middle. Like, <laughs> I want to say I'm near to I, I to be... <laughs> well, oh Most God. of the table is some version of, of neurodivergence. The only reason we're making this joke. Uh, Much like yes, the trans point, stuff we caveat. talked about, yes, there is a reason why we're making this joke. If we make true. a joke about something, just assume that we fit into that demographic most <laughs> of the time. But so, Cadix, 
the voice mm-hmm. like does perk up, but. I think you actually hear the tide's voice speak up mm. a little bit more again. It's like, this is fascinating. You're a little bit more interesting than this one. Are you sure you don't want to take one of us for a ride? Hmm. Honestly, I would, but I think my mission is more important than you. Hmm. Bit of a bold statement. I feel like you have quite a lot of sorrow for someone who's run away for several different lives. I personally don't. Hmm. I wonder if we I could find one. Not. Mm-hmm. Oh, nothing, dear. I, I don't thoughts. hear you. Did I need to hear it? All she said was, I wonder if we can find more. More gloves. Despair. From me? In her, in Cadex. Oh, what? The glove is not buying, not buying the toxic positivity. The glove's like, oh, fascinating. Honestly, you probably could. You're not going to, but you could. Oh, well. I've honestly been thinking about it. Hmm. In fact, and the voice actually drops a little bit. Like, in fact, would you want to? Very tempting offer. This one's a little too worn out. And Damocles isn't fond of sharing. Well, if the dated memories are there correctly, I've been around for a long time. What would I have to do? Just say yes, dear. Hmm. I'll wait for the best opportunity. But I can talk to you anytime now. Good to know, dear. You just hear like a, a right. like a, a grumble of gray anger around from Damocles. Like, the hell are you doing? Why are you doing a trade deal inside of the body? Yep. I don't hear any of that. <laughs> no. That's the benefit of Cadix's ability, is that it's a one way. That's why it's a GM intrusion for me to be like, by the way, something talks back. Uh, and then back to everybody, just, oh, okay, so if we're all here, uh, oh no, okay, I actually don't know what we're looking for. Before we knew about the greenhouse, no clue what we're looking for right now. I mean, we're trying to, like, get the whole security thing, right? Right, but what I'm saying is, before we had, like, hey, find the greenhouse from, like, the, 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 you know, video. Love. We don't know Love what Junior, what are we looking for? You're looking for for the lightning core, dear. I'm certain that if they have anything of relevance of a high nature, they'll probably be keeping it there. You all might want to turn around and take a look at what's happening as well. And as that voice says that, so as we are going to be uh, heading to break in like a couple of minutes, uh, so, so give it about like five minutes. I'm going to give you a nice debrief of what your immediate reaction is to once I finish describing what you see. Oh, buddy. So here is the deal, folks. As you turn around, you see there is no like open field in the way that the other place was. Instead, you feel as though you are in the deepest part of a massive valley where there are rocks, like rock paths, like just, you're you basically imagine just Grand Canyon levels of like how deep it feels. But after some long distance, you do see the edges of like the end of where this section begins. And far off in the distance, you just hear like lightning just going off at random. And you can see far, far off in the distance, up above, there are massive lightning storms. And there appears to be almost like a raised uh, central edifice around which there are floating eight different uh, 
crystalline nodes that are refracting different bits of electricity and powering what seems to be a central sort of little hub area. But every now and then, the lightning storms are just chucking bolts into different directions. And as far off as those look, you occasionally are seeing lightning bolts landing right in the middle of the valley that you're in. So that's the first thing. I don't like that. I don't like that you're typing. It oh, worries like, me. You, you ride the lightning, right? It should be fine. Jinx is already timing things in her head again. Here is the other thing that you notice. There, you actually notice it by nature of hearing it. There are other voices some distance away. You hear screams some distance away. And you hear almost like there are full-on rock slides happening at different sections. And you see that there's a group of people a little bit farther than what would be considered long distance away from all of you, trying to run through to where your your section appears to be one of the only safe spots that they can see. And a variety of different backgrounds, but two of them stand out to two in your party. One of them, taller, a bit more of a ponytail and a little bit more limber in build, but spitting image of Jinx. And another one, not quite the same hairstyle, but definitely a similar facial shape to Enoch, a woman. running towards your group the both of them seemingly trying to keep a group of five other people safe as a much older but still pretty fit individual who does look somewhat like enoch in some parts is running towards your group trying to avoid being taken out by a rock slide I, I was going to say, like, Cadix, once we got a moment to chill, not chill, but you know what I mean, talk a little bit. Um, Enoch? Mm-hmm. Enoch is, has, can I, I saw this. I I'm going to say you're going to see this right okay. as Cadix is talking to you. Uh, okay. The rock slide's happening. Can I, like, quickly just try to make an ice wall or something to... I would say yes, but this will still be a task of some sort to see if you can finagle it carefully okay. enough. To I cannot. I cannot let these people die before we meet them. Well, I let, let me. I think they might know what. I don't know if they know what they're doing. <laughs> Not like that. They have experience because Enoch. Um, the computer said that Kadisha was here four hours ago. What? Huh? Yeah, she accessed four the hours? panel. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if time is, you know, like if the computer's off on time. <laughs> right. Um, but, but they still. got here before we did. And they said they, okay, let me put it this way. At first they were like, security bypass happened. Haha. <laughs> and I was like, wait, that can only be done by Enoch or Ezekiel, right? Um, but no, the computer said Kadisha did it. I asked when, and they said four hours ago. Oh, okay. I don't understand how she could still be. I mean, alive. theoretically, my body's still alive, and I was, in fact, someone. <laughs> right? We're about the same age. Shit, that's true. I'm now, don't get me true. wrong. I this probably has something to do with it. She'll like point to all the mechanical parts, right? Fair. Um, I will say, Kadisha does have some. It does have at least in the arm and leg department, very similar to Cadex. So, it's not impossible. You're right. By the way, Errol, difficulty four might task to do this correctly. Cool. Yeah, sorry about that. 
How far away are they from us? They are now reaching a long distance away from you. Long distance. I'm going to spend one of my XP. <laughs> I, I'm guessing I know what that roll was. <laughs> okay, that's much better. Okay. What did you get? Does a 17 do it? A 17 will do it. Nice. You watch as Adisha tries to like reach out to somebody and you watch as the rock side is about to happen. It There's two that are happening, one hitting the back of the group of five people and the other one about to hit Kadisha and the individual who looks like Jinx uh, from the front, but, but they're each coming from different sides. Kadisha seems to like reach out to try and pull one person towards her. And as the rock side's about to hit her and also reaching out to the person who looks like Jinx, you watch as the rock slides pass through her. She seems to phase out of reality partially. And you watch as the other rock slide is about to like crash down on the group from behind when an ice wall just emerges and it's it holds up just enough for people to like take shelter underneath it before it cracks in front of them. I, you I think Kara, oh god. You still feel rumbling coming from the valley. Another slide's about to happen. They're all now close distance to you. And that is the moment that we were gonna leave on as we go to break. As oh <laughs> worked. First one worked. Job, I'm gonna deal with another one. But folks, <laughs> folks, this is this is a no, very emotional feeling, and I've been waiting to throw this kind of thing in the works uh, for a little bit for this entire first half. I've been waiting to see when the right moment to do it, and this felt right. So uh, thank you to everyone who's been tuning in so far. We are about to take about a 10-minute break. Uh, take your meds, get some water, use the bathroom. Make sure that uh, also tell folks about us. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, go and subscribe, go watch, uh, go after this, or just tell your friends to go watch the other VODs and all of our other series happening on the channel, or just even in this series. We have seven, uh, I believe now, six, at least six episodes up. So we got a lot you can catch up on, but we'll see you all in about 10 minutes, folks. See you soon.
Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the second half of our eighth session of Numenera Erovin, where lands crackle and rage. Our party, uh, one of whom is currently just finishing up dinner, which is always a good decision. <laughs> be well fed, everybody. If you didn't get water, you didn't take your meds. Mama Ange is going to be mad at you. You don't. Oh, no. Actually, I'm not going to be mad. I'm going to be disappointed in you. That's worse. Everyone knows. I that know. Is worse. That's why I said That's it. That's so much worse. I know. Because my parents thought that it was better to just be disappointed in me than mad. Look how I turned See, out. I turned out I gay and trans. My, do we think disappointment is what the combination of anger and grief causes with these clubs? No. They just turn you trans, which is good. So maybe you should keep them. You can be turned, everybody. Yeah. Don't believe what everyone else has said. You can be turned trans. It's a good thing. <laughs> That's the true gay agenda. The true gay Listen. agenda is that everyone becomes more trans. It's sort of, exactly. it's sort of, you know, like the the worst person you know is like made a great point thing. It's that, but for being turned trans. <laughs> Even a broken clock, right? Carrying on. From this uh, fantastic thread okay, we started coming text. back to. Okay, and I'm canceled. Um, <laughs> so, so I was about to say, Arrow, Fluffy Bud, Fluffy Bud Junior. Uh, what's her last name? Natural. That's what she's gonna do. She's gonna call you your whole government name. <laughs> so, folks, uh, with this being, with us coming back into us, our party has just seen what appears to be Adisha running, leading a group of survivors away from a rock slide that she has just partially phased herself out of existence along with another individual who looks like Jinx, like striking image of Jinx in a lot of ways, except very blonde and ponytailed hair. The group has managed to protect them from the first wave of rock slides coming in. And now there is another uh, wave of rock slides at beginning. It is within close distance to all of you. It will not hit you, but if you move into range, which would be immediate range for them once you move, you will be in a uh, rock slide distance because it's very close to all of you. What are you doing? You need quick answers. Uh, I'm going to put up a, like a ice bubble, basically. You're using more points for that? Yep. Um, just here's actually here's what I'll do is I'm gonna make an ice dome and then I'm gonna direct everyone. I'm gonna point at the cracked wall. Okay. This way. Yeah. The teacher's coming this way. So that's another two another points. Yeah. I am so low on everything. And again, Harold. What memories about making a change you didn't want to are coming in? Um, making a change I didn't want to. The day I got kicked out of my town, I am remembering um, the look on my parents' face as I walked out and how they would not even look at me whenever I left. And I was forced to leave the only home I had never known. That memory, like as the as you're like summoning water around you and it's just building up, the rest of your party you're seeing like, are we at tears yet, Errol? <laughs> or is there, are we still just straining? Um, I think with this ice, what you see is that Errol down her cheeks has a coated trail of icicles where tears would be. Yeah, and you see Hadija just like hauling everyone over and the rock slide batters against the dome and it breaks it eventually, but it's like the rocks have stopped and formed a perimeter outside of you. You've protected everyone again. Um, Maddox is gonna start pulling people you know just that last like yank pulling them closer <laughs> thank you thank you just like a really 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 young girl like probably only max 20. Mm -hmm. sad that i have to say 20 is like really young to me now i'm sad i made myself sad and what what about 20 is young to you 
Shut up. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now 11 years younger than me, Noel. Uh, and maybe there is some people, some 20 year old, some 20 people in their, maybe see, they're cool and chill. You okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're, you're, if you're going to say something, you got to try and speak it through clearly. I'm not maybe. <laughs> 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 um, oh, your elders are talking to you, Rad, telling you to assume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Errol shoots a bolt of lightning at the DM. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I did. I'm assuming I just pulled one of the five people to me. Like, yeah, no. Uh, okay. Almost everyone is in the the two who are staying back to make sure like everyone is getting back are Hidisha and the other individual who looks like Jinx. Yeah. Mm. Um, pulling everyone over. Uh, is anyone hurt? The individual who. <laughs> uh, who looks like Jinx comes over. I, I, I can take care of them. Just okay. hold on a second. And you watch as like she holds out her hands, and you see that there's almost like these crystalline like jewels like embedded in a glove in each of her hands. And you see that folks like who might have some minor injuries are are looking a little bit better, but she looks pretty worn out even from just doing that. It's a very similar thing to what Enoch did earlier with the healing, you sense. Yeah. Enoch, I don't know uh, what your resources are. But... There. Okay. I can okay. can I heal Jinx's family member? Like, can I heal their healer? Yes. Okay, but as a support main, the support. Yeah, I'm. I'm crying. No one remembers us. <laughs> no one remembers us. They just want us to die and yell at us for not doing more. <laughs> I'm so glad someone was um, like, "Take care yeah, of the white mate." Listen, too. as the popular and cool DPS, who everyone. <laughs> um, um, didn't overextend. You wouldn't get hurt. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'll stop Let's being mad. See. I'll stop summoning the memories of being a medic in TF2 and people wondering why I'm letting them die. It's because you keep making mistakes. I heal people who don't make mistakes or who learn. <laughs> or who learn. I want to make that clarification. Or who I'm learn. Imagine sure if you went into a doctor and they were like, I'm not going to treat you. Because <laughs> you've done this before. Have you met I told the, you not to. Have you met the doctor from TF2? He doesn't even have a medical license. Let's be clear. <laughs> Um, Anyways, yeah, I, I can't heal anybody. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. I, I can. Can I give, <clears throat> like, um, dear, dear, it's it's fine. I I have enough to keep us going through here. I believe. Do you know how to get I... through here? Mildly, the, the the lightning storms have made things a bit difficult. The rock slides were not normally this persistent. Hmm. So, quick question. Is there, like, a security protocol that's not being done? It's, it, it is. And you see, uh, you see the individual who's speaking... Uh, who looks like Jinx is about to speak, and then you hear Kadisha pipe up. Which, by the way, again, as a reminder, looks looks like Queen Atifa, but like we're talking like Silver which Fox. Said it also, looks like Enoch, which implies that Enoch. Yes, that's why Enoch's a pretty. I mean, it's <laughs> right. He's shaped, and, and I I shape mostly. The rest is like mm -hmm. some is definitely Zeke's vibe, but. And I, I think when, when Kadisha comes up, you, Enoch, you're just getting hit in the back from Kadix, like, too excited. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like she doesn't want to say anything, but she's like... <laughs> she, she definitely has her hands... Uh, she has her, her hand on her face, and it's like, uh, yes, I, I love my husband, but he was a little too over-enthusiastic with making sure the security protocols would be working, so... When they went awry, they started causing havoc all across the research site when the creatures got in. Oh, got the mission at the husband. She's hitting you harder. <laughs> my, my apologies. My name is um <clears throat> my name is Khadija. I am I'm assistant to the head researcher here. 
or I'm the secondary head researcher in cases of emergency. Um, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, this is uh, this is my friend Gertrude. She is uh, an acquaintance of mine who uh, I called in on, uh, for a favor and I believe I have long passed uh, reaching the end of that favor's limits. And you just hear Gertrude going, yes, I know. I, I established this a while ago by nature of I've nearly taken three rock slides to the face and a lightning bolt to the leg. It's like She's now hitting Jinx too, both of you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just picturing Caddix in the back. <laughs> Actually, you, I know exactly what the, what the gesture is. I know that Torin as a person does the little like Flappy cat, a uh, bop cat emote in chat every now and then. That's that's mm -hmm. what Caddix is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Errol is doing the like the flash. I have no idea who this is thing. <laughs> God damn it! Wait, wait. The one where he's like pulls off the mask. Yeah, and like, yeah, yeah exactly. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Gertrude is like. Uh, well, we did manage to get some people out of here. I think this is the last group of people, aside from anyone in the Blizzard section, who needs to get out. But I think Zeke decided to go and take care of that himself. Zeke? Uh, uh, you sorry. Still alive? Sorry, Ezekiel. Uh, and you see your Khadija pipe up. Yes, my husband. He's, well, uh, no, birthing, I... par birthing partner. I just call him husband because we... Uh, Myself and Huey kind of share him to an extent, but it's an open relationship to an extent. I, I volunteered to be birthing partner for them. It's it's a weird scenario. Sorry. You ain't got to tell me all your business, baby. I, it's, it's but have it. I... You, do you know... I... I'm sorry, do you where that before? No, but I know who you are. I know who Zeke alarming. is. Alarming, doubly alarming. Oh, no, no, it's a good thing. It's no, good thing in a us. good way. Uh, I am your descendant, Katarina. Nope, no, okay. No, hold on. No, I see how that's alarming. <laughs> no, but yes. No. No. But Stay gets weirder and weirder. Just um, sort of tries to brush that one yeah. off. Oh, okay. How about this? Uh, I think we need to get problems first, and then we can talk. But yeah, mm -hmm. please. Can you take Zeke? Can explain me and Caddix too, probably, at least to some extent. Um, so let us help you and then we can get some clarity. All right. Um, see what I can, see what you can do to manage this. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't know where we're going. Um, we're just trying to get the security stuff back in place. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the protocol that uh, the backup protocol that Zeke put in there. Um, I'm sad we don't have any sort of descendant here to be involved, but if we can get around that, wait, <laughs> I just I, said the, literally the just said. Oh, sorry. yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> it's been it's been a very long. Uh, I've nearly been hit by about three thunderbolts at this point. Yeah, no, no worries. You know. But, uh, Errol um, puts the like shocking glove behind her back. Uh, and, and some of us can travel a really long distance if you just point out where we're going. All right. Um, like, has a very discerning look towards the whole group. I mean, we got here, right? Fair enough. Don't look over there. <laughs> she points to like <laughs> destruction. <laughs> no, that's fine. I. Oh, uh, Zeke is going to be so mad about this. 
It's very hard know, to replicate seemed... that substance. Yeah, he seemed really uh, nice, though. I don't know. Well, kind of, in it's... memories. He loves Enoch. Yeah. In any case, um, I think, uh, Gertrude, if you feel like you can escort people back from here, put them um, here, I'll give you the security codes to, to move from this zone back over there. Uh, I'll see if I can implement access to get the group back. And um, like you see her pull out like a very, it, it, I'm just basically going to say, if you know the Dragon Ball Z capsule core, little capsule thingies, this one, it, she folds out and expands into like a floating viscous water-like material. This should be able to function as a substitute bridge for the normal pattern to get you all back down below. Um, I know it's not getting everyone to another fall, to another safety point yet, but Gertrude, um, I, I did inform Gertrude of a few other spots, so we should be able to get the rest of you to safety. Um, suspension on research experiments and such will have to happen because obvious reasons mm. while we Zeke and I finish taking care of this. Um, you are all free to head out and I'm glad that you're all safe. Thank you again for sticking back as long as you did to try and make sure everything in this sector was taken care of. Uh, Gertrude, feel free to take them uh, and head on out. So Gertrude looks like she's about to start. Um, Actually, but I know this is really inconvenient right now. Uh, Gertrude, oh, she gets out the book. What's your full name? <laughs> Are you going to be here for a while? <laughs> so what? whatever name would be filled in here yeah. uh, for Jinx, or rather it's a name. Oh, actually, because you said Jinx was just raised by two other people, right? Then you would actually hear Jinx's original last name. Which VB, if you have a last name you would like me to use, by all means, go for it. But yeah, we she got raised by the mommy cule. You know, I'm not even sure if she would know it. She, she hears what is, what is her original last name. Uh, she frozen. She's just standing there, like, and watching yeah. like ping pong. Like she's basically Caddox is trying to like she's going to do this to every single person for the record, just like little quick blurps of every single person, but especially. Uh, Gertrude, um, where are you going to go after this? Um, uh, I'll be probably heading back over to the uh, western region, heading more towards Hydros. And uh, there's there's another research site. I don't know why these folks thought we needed more than a couple of these, but there's another research site uh, on ground level that's as far as they've let me know been awakened and oh. okay because of that i am gonna go make sure that my wife is okay i am going to go see if she has not been caught up in all of this mess with her own uh, little delving interests my my wife is inclined to delve she used to be a school teacher but she was inclined to she started doing delving is she here? Uh, no, 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 no. My 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 wife decided to stay home. I decided to take this one myself. Uh, gotcha. I didn't I didn't want her to risk uh, being put in danger when um, she still recovered. She had a bit of a fall a little bit ago, and I didn't want her to take the risk with all the trouble getting here. I think Caddox is going to look at Jinx and just go. I'm sorry. I know we're quick on time. Um, Gertrude. Here, she's going to give her one of the notebooks of, like, past adventures between Caddox and Jinx. Um, take this with you. Read it if you want. If you have a book you want to give me, that's fine. But I, I won't ask you to stay, but I want to talk to you again. My name's Caddox. Oh, do you have any relationship to, they were mentioning somebody named Katerina? It's incredibly complicated, but yes. You know what? Fair. This entire day has been way more complicated than I would have liked it to have been. I, um, I running a classroom was much better than this. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, read this book. I at least I can't. I, hold on. I can't tell you to do that. I would suggest you do it. Um, 
There's someone really cool mentioned in it. Their name is Jinx. In fact, that's Jinx, but I don't want to... And she's going to look at Jinx again like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I didn't ask if I could share this, but I think you'd be really interested to know about her. Your name is Jinx? Well, that's funny. That was, um, that was a nickname I was going to give my daughter. Well. That might be. You know? Maybe. And she's like rattling off the names of the mommy cure. So that's who raised me. And I'm a teacher. But now I don't. And these are my friends. So. Mm. Are you? Yeah. yeah. It's a little much. It's a little much. A little yeah, much isn't that's it? why yeah. maybe you might want to read it and not get crushed by rocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's 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 um, move this to a safer yeah. spot. Sorry. If, if you can wait. She she oh, just drops the book and she goes and she hugs Jinx. Jinx that's like, my favorite book. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick it up. <laughs> right okay. 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 Can, can we do that or we're not gonna die? That's... Sorry. And like everyone has moved into like the previous uh, the the room with the like defunct wall that's been destroyed. I didn't think I was ever going to see you again. Ever see you is, is is good, yes. Yes, yes. Didn't think my mother was still alive. I didn't think I knew that you were alive. Yeah, there was a bunch of us. I mean, uh, that's the reason we call this the mommy cure. I have like... Fifteen brothers and sisters and non-binary nibblings. I... <clears throat> you see she, she moves over and Khadija has like, like, like taken her hand and like held it and like moved to take the survivors and you see her, she's like interacting with uh, the like furthest back wall and you see her like it's almost like she's tracing patterns along the wall and you see her hand partially phases through and does like a turning motion and then you see as there's almost like a door frame that appears made entirely out of like water to transport folks back and mm -hmm. she starts leading folks over H hold on a second i'm gonna pick up the book very quickly not pretty draw just an image of Jinx and Gertrude hugging, slam the book, and be like, here, just when you have time, we'll catch up. It has stories of her and I going on adventures and stuff before this. Um, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Stay see safe. Uh, we'll try. She... <laughs> Highly like, emotional. There comes Kelly. <laughs> and she just walks out of the scene. <laughs> yeah, she walks towards the doorway with, uh, but I will ask Jinx, do you follow her towards the doorway? Well, she's probably gonna gonna for for a second be like, and then kind I of didn't blame you. Whoosh, like and and just looks at Kelly. It's like, did that did that did that just happen, or? Am I having a stroke? I wouldn't blame you if you left. Left where? where? Go talk to her! No! What am I gonna say? Hi, my name is Jinx and this is what I do. 
don't know how he did that. Okay, you did that, but you know. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I could tell you. We both stopped talking, and I didn't know what to do, so I just gave her the story real quick. So if she needed to get out of this place and didn't die, so then she—it's just the, the bad ramble of a moment. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Let's, let's, let's give all of this, this, this uh, sh- moment. Okay. Yeah. But she's around. <laughs> Goes octave higher. <laughs> hey, what I are mean, they all uh, doing here? I mean, that's a really good question that I would really love to find out, but I think this is more important. <laughs> she points to all the lightning and everything going off. Um, and, but... and, and, how, and how is how is Enoch's grandma going through walls? She cool like that. <laughs> I mean, Enoch had to be cool somehow, right? Because we all know Ezekiel was well, cool in his own way. <laughs> it was nerdy. It was nerdy. It coming from Cadix, that is extra funny. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. He was cool, I guess. In his own way. You know, everyone but... is cool in their own way. Yeah, exactly. No I one mean, doesn't Enoch have like value. Mm-hmm. That's right, Errol. Nope. <laughs> That's right, and Errol. No one doesn't have value. Anyways, um, I don't know. We can. I'm gonna go throw myself at this issue a few more times, and we'll see what we can do. Well, we might could do it in a smarter way. But mostly, what I'm thinking is you could do what you did before, Errol, which was really cool when you grabbed Enoch and yeah, and like went through things and got past him. We just don't yeah. know where that is. Uh, that sounds good. Um, let's let's get going. Yeah. You do see Khadija taking a very long look at you, Errol. Uh, you said Khadija had two gloves, right? Yes, she has two. She has two. Are those? They're not your gloves. This is just a pair of her own gloves. Okay, They're actual gloves. Just, yeah. They're actual <laughs> gloves. Not not eldritch horror elementally aspected. Not sure I'm gonna come for my grandma behind some gloves. Hello. <laughs> You know, might smoothly kill you. I don't know. Right, <laughs> I, listen, listen, it's Penthos is a different thing, okay? We all hate Penthos. And it's... I don't hate Penthos. <laughs> Who is we? Why are we French? Listen, Penthos, I don't like you and you don't like me. Wow! I don't hate you or dislike you in any way. Penthos, I know you got it out from me, but I want to let I, you know that beef I, I is beneath. I don't feel anything of the sort. I feel pity. That beef is water under the bridge. Ooh, that's kind of worse. Oh, yeah, that's worse. Maybe that beef was chicken um, instead. Katisha, Anyways, um, uh, you know, do you want to zip up and uh, do your thingy? Put your thingy in the thingy? Yeah, sure. Kadisha, yeah. where are they zipping to? Um, uh, yes, uh, give me a moment. And she walks over and she talks with Gertrude for a second, who, by the way, Gertrude is just every now and then just trying to catch Jinx's eye. But the moment, if she ever does actually catch your eye, Jinx, she quickly looks away. You're both doing the, if we just ignore it, if we just (laughs) ignore it, then no one will have to deal with it, right? Not not this moment, no. Nope. Jinx, I know that that's not like your mother, like that's like your bio mom, but Holly, yep, you both share a lot of traits. Just that's not really relevant to the situation. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh that will take a little bit to deal with. Um <clears throat> I wish I had a story oh. for you for her. Sorry. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Where are we? we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, other stuff yeah. first. Um, I'll also, make sure you get there. anything first. Speaking of Penthos, by the way, Penthos seeing a way out is going to go with oh. the other group. Penthos, no. Penthos. This is partially a GM consideration so that I'm not having to keep justifying Penthos being here. Bye, Penthos. Penthos. Be careful. Bye, okay, Penthos. I want to let you know. Okay, you're great, man. Okay, you're great. I wish you the best of luck this everything i'm mad about you ripping the glove off of me oh, but you're you also, 
You're yeah, I was like, that was a weird pause. <laughs> but also, you've removed a very great burden from me, and so thank you. Cool. I wish you luck. Just <laughs> walks through the door. It's just like gen genuinely like a sad look of like, I'm sorry. It's almost the equivalent of saying like, I'm sorry, I couldn't do more to help you. Mm. Bummer city, am I right, guys? Mm, I get it. And uh, you do see Khadija is about to walk back and you do see Gertrude looking back at Jinx and uh, she does walk back forward to the group and she passes over a small notebook to Cadix. Thanks. And she picks up the book that she dropped. I'll take notes for you. And uh, she turns to look at Jinx who whether or not she is looking to catch her eye, she says, um, I've written the name of the spot in Hydros where you can find us if you ever want to talk again. Okay. Yes, 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 but not right this minute. Yes. Nice to meet you. That was weird. Sorry. Mm -hmm. She starts, she walks away and is right, she's at the doorway and it's about to pull her away. She's like, this is just like a flurry of things that she just like suddenly tries to say and but she doesn't get to get through all of it but the gist of what you hear is the following listen i thought i was going to be a screw-up of a mother if i kept you I, I i gave you to somebody who i thought would give you a better life i'm so sorry about everything i'm i if you hate me it's fine if you want to chat it'll be fine i'm you look like you've turned out great and i'm proud of you i don't know if that sounds weird just disappears right near the end of that last bit. It's like, well, I knew I got that from somewhere. <laughs> also, I wrote it down if you want to hear all of it again. Yeah, you know what? I also know why you're my friend. You weird too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you should that uh, now does come over. So, grandson, do I? Is this what? Is this the proper term? What? What was? Was it Enoch? You said? Yeah, Enoch, grandson by a great number of degrees. I would imagine so. It is a pleasure to meet you for the first time. I'm sure Zeke is. I didn't actually always believe Zeke when he was talking about you, but um, I suppose he was right. And I owe him several bets worth of meals. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> he could never produce proof, so I kept winning the bet by default. Yeah, I, that's fair. I, I owe him, oh uh, dear, he's never gonna let me forget this one. <laughs> I wouldn't either. You know what, you get that from him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the the rock slides here are meant to be a representation of past locales uh, that have existed across Aravin, and they are periodic, but either someone needs to figure out the safest path to do it, regardless of where they are going to fall, or someone needs to figure out the actual pattern of when they are falling to determine what the current safest route is. There may be one that happens regardless, but that one would be something that someone much more dexterous than I would need to manage. And How far is it? This would be the equivalent mechanically. You have to traverse a long range. So this will be, I would say, two rolls of this. If you're just doing it without any sort of abilities, this would be two rolls of probably speed or might to see if you can just deal with the strain of finding a spot to just very carefully sidle along the valley and not make enough movement or it's speed if you're just being fast enough. In terms of figuring out the path, that would come down to an intellect task to see what would be the best path overall. 
Jens, can you tell anything? Huh? Can you see anything? In anything what? Like how to get through the heck of this? Oh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, all right. Yep. Yeah. Um, and she's gonna, you know, do her thing. Do you need me to roll something, or would you like yes. me to do through the that? Day. Do the so thing. this is a difficulty for intellect task. So this is oh, a uh, jinx. So no. this is oh. this, so, so, so this is navigation related, which she is trained in, which would get you to three, and then uh, find the way, which if you spend for the effort will get you yes. down to one with the two uh, with the effort and then right. the auto effort and that enabled. Yes, which means I have to spend two points for that. All right. Yes, which will get you to only one difficulty. So you need a three or higher in order to pass this. This is the way. 18. 18. Very Yay! Okay. That's much more than, <laughs> than needed. Three. So despite what I, I think it's fair to assume, a, a little bit of distraction going on in Jinx's mind with everything that's just happened. She probably threw herself into this. It's like distraction. I need to not think about my emotions right now. I need yes. to just do a thing right now. So you are able to lead the group, which right now is a lot of you and Khadijah. And she's talking uh, the whole time. Uh, okay, so this first part is a difficulty. Uh, the next, the next uh, issue will be uh, the the crop, uh, the land puzzle that always shifts uh, every now and then. That marks off the territory between these two spots. I I can never quite remember the exact orientation for it, but essentially Zeke wanted to test how different cops would react with an immediate water source being applied or how different patches of land after they've been experiencing a drought. So essentially, if you could figure out the order amongst these eight patches of land to water them, it will naturally create a path that smooths out and will deal with the rock slides on the sides. But um, <clears throat> that's, that's only the first difficulty to get through. The other one is the lightning fields. That is going to be fun. Um, question. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to function as a lightning rod for those? Define what your intent is before I say yes to this. Like, just be, use my ability to drain charges to take the hits so that I can like, Here's, here's what I'll tell you. This is, uh, this is uh, in true uh, Final Fantasy X fashion, this is essentially lightning dodging is what you would be doing. If you do this, you are acting... <laughs> Torrin knows exactly where I'm going. Torrin's like, no, I hate this part. <laughs> this part of the game sucked. Uh, anyways, so what you would be doing is you would be having to roll either might to endure the hit or speed to dodge at just the right moment every single time one of these lightning bolts is redirected to you, which I'm going to roll a die, and I will determine a random amount how many bolts you would have to deal with. I'm not going to tell you, but that is an option you can do. You do think the glove is strong enough that it could tank it, but if you fail, this is going to be a severe amount of damage. Like, we're talking bare minimum four points of damage. I mean, what other choice do we have? Right. Um, I have an idea. If you want it, but I don't know if it'll work. What's the idea, Karis? Tell us the idea. Let us meet your um, evil mind. Well, this is Numenera, right? The lightning part? I... Oof. Okay, I'll use it. I have one XP, and I would like to use it for... Or I could use it for convenient glimmer. 
depending on how we want to do this. What would convenient glimmer do? Provides you with a clear answer to suggest a course of action with regard to an urgent question, problem, or obstacle you're facing. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't, it would fix it, but, you know, I could try to ah, machine it. That was really scientific. Ah. Uh, so wait, we, we travel with the Jinx's role. We're like, where are we currently? So where, where you're at right now to give you all a, a to the TLDR version is, okay, you have made it past the initial rock slides because of Jinx's navigation. Mm -hmm. The boundary between the lightning fields and where you are at is its own little puzzle. Uh, there are eight patches of land that cover it that Khadijah has informed you that so long as you, uh, so think of it like two rows of four boxes, essentially what the patches of land are, you need to essentially water the correct patches and they will reorient to form a clear path that will prevent anything else while you're on the path from getting to you as you cross over. What happens if we water the wrong patches? Oh, they immediately shrivel up, die, and the earth crumbles beneath it. Oh, fun. Is there a reason I couldn't just... What does psh mean? Like shower everything? You could. It will immediately cause multiple sections of it to crumble. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the wrong path. It's just no one ever did that because folks were just like, oh, do this, 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 and this. Because usually the people who are working here already knew all of the answers. Khadijah's what do we want to? What do we want to do, folks? Um, I, I feel like I'm kind of when all you have is a hammering right now. <laughs> no, mm. What exactly are we trying to do? Water a bunch of fields. Essentially. In the right mm. order. Okay. Right. Um, find 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 the way. I would I would say here. This is the way that I'll put it. There are four pairs of devices, one for uh one for each pair of boxes because it's two rows of four. They could be a potential numenera. So if you identify it and you choose to act and you understand what it is and you activate it, or at least remove the power source, maybe that also powers the disintegration of the rock itself. You don't know. You would have to examine the devices, mm -hmm. but you do know that one uh, activating it in one way will water one section, activating it in another way will water another section. Yeah, I'm trying to... I, I was reading through scan. I don't know if really scan will help me here. Because I'm assuming this is bigger than a three meter cube, like 10, by, 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because I can only scan a small portion of it, but it, maybe if Jinx, you point me in the right direction. Yeah, as long as I don't have to understand the Numenera because I have an inability for that. No, I can do I that can part. Scavenge it and salvage it, but I'm understanding what? Yeah, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. In that case, uh, I think the, the pair of roles that would be best here are first, Cadix, if you can, mm -hmm. uh, this will be, let's put a difficulty four intellect task. God, I'm going to drop my, what die? Okay, four. So, so, so identify that in a uh, Numenera, identify yeah. what it is, or at least the function of this device. And this is an intellect task? This is an intellect task. I have an edge of two. So um, that would make the cost of effort uh, drop down to only one for the first one. And then two for every six. Uh, six. I will do one effort. That's my. Okay, so with identifying and with that, so it's only a two, difficulty of two, so you need a six or higher. That's all I got. Are we officially still working on the same task? I would say yes. All right, plus one. Okay. So that's just plus one to the roll, right? Yep. yep. Okay. You and I work together because we are the team. That's a 19 plus 120! Oh my gosh! That's... Uh, thank you for being nice to me once. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you rolled that 20 at the beginning. That Yeah, mm -hmm. that didn't count. That's a major effect, uh -huh. too. That is a major effect as well. Yes. Hold on. Oh my god, I'm... I actually did something good, y'all. You, you did. Oh yeah! You frequently do do amazing things, Torrin. Oh, Don't make me a habit, right. I have to say to you. 
Okay, roll. I did a roll good once. <laughs> like, super good. Bless you? Oh, no, it's young. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. It looked like the beginnings of a sneeze. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's episode eight. It took so long. <laughs> so uh, I, will... I want everyone at home to follow your dreams. Oh Lord! Oh, oh, oh. Play this game for 21 hours if you finally rolled well. So Listen, uh, this the is the gambler's fallacy. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I did find two exact things that would work for this. So okay. between all, all the pairs, uh, you find a working pair of ciphers. Mm -hmm. Number one, one of the devices is a crystal nodule. This okay. is called... Uh, I, I'm not even going to make you roll to identify it. I'm going to make that part of your major effect just rolled in. One is okay. called a shock nodule. Ooh. So, shock nodule. I got to roll for this real quick. Okay. That's a two. Crystal no nodule affixed to a melee weapon in terms of how it could be used. For the next 28 hours, each time the weapon the nodule is attached to strikes a solid creature or object, it generates a burst of electricity, inflicting one additional point of damage. Two points if the cipher is level four or higher. Three points if it's six or higher. Nice. Uh, it's a two, so it yeah. does one more point of damage and bursts out electricity. Gotcha. Um, Errol is looking at it like a like a jealous. It's like she, someone's flirting with someone, and you're like jealous. It's like I mean, I can do that just as good as. <laughs> See, this is where we insert you versus the the girl she told you to not to worry about meme right here <laughs> so that is the second it one even take over your body slowly <laughs> the second one is what you notice it, it looks to be uh, a ring that was around a sort of metal rod affixed into the ground that uh can uh, actually be worn and this i also have to roll for this as well wow interesting so this is usable once. It delivers a powerful burst of electricity that shocks any creature touched, inflicting damage equal to the cipher's level. I rolled a five plus four. Hey. So it oh. deals nine points of damage on anything you hit hmm. with it. Uh, what was it called? One time, though, right? Shocker at one time. You have a shock nodule that basically lets it work for 28 hours for one additional point constant. And then you have a shocker that is a one-time... Bamp. Can't so you're saying it's one time? Okay, okay. One time. Okay. They're both ciphers. Do not let Errol have it. Anyways. Uh, <clears throat> okay. If um, I had that, I could get my minimum damage for one hit to a 32. Mm -hmm. I hate that I have to increase the difficulty <laughs> of all of my creatures just because of Errol. I was like, I was going to give you all like level three difficulty creatures, level four, because it's not too bad. No, I have to think about level six fucking creatures because Errol will one shot everything. Anyways. Um, okay, so this is for me like scanning, looking about, you know um, exactly and understanding. How work, okay. And you know the exact pattern. You, honestly, Jinx doesn't even need to do a roll now. Like, if you want it to be the major effect, is that you just identify the exact patches that need to be tended to. Sure. You can have that be the thing. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's very much like there's a moment of looking at them where the facility recognizes your authority, Cadex. Okay. Your old authority. <laughs> Sorry, Baldur's Gate authority. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So here's the good news, everybody. Um, this is the order, and she starts pointing it out and everything. Um, so I think we're through this part. Like I said, next, if we just can, you know, zoom you guys in, we might be okay. Uh, and then I will start orchestrating, getting everybody to water the correct patches in the correct order. Yep, you do so, and a path forms. 
like all four uh all four pairs of lands suddenly reorient and collapse together and form a complete path leading all the way over to the start of the lightning fields oh um, wow okay as we're how walking. large are the lightning fields we're talking a fair distance this is the okay. uh, i'll put it to you this way this ain't something you're skipping just with ride the lightning stuff like this is th this is like at least a few football stadiums worth of and what would the difficulty be for me to do that lightning rod thing I would say a difficulty five for every or everything. This is dodging lightning or well, lightning. It's not an easy lightning. thing to do. I I think it'd be really funny if I confidently step up there, instantly get struck by a bolt of lightning, <laughs> and then just fall to the ground. Um. You're welcome to try, hon. You, uh, uh, as many a GM before me has said, you can certainly try. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this may be a good idea, maybe a bad idea. I don't know. Um, you know, let me give you this. Hmm. I'm going to give you one of my ciphers, a banishing nodule. Now, okay. I'm not saying this is a good idea, but essentially what happens is you can attach it to a weapon, and when you hit things, it moves it over in a d random direction oh so oh. i'm not saying this is a good thing because it also lowers people's defense when you hit them with it but if shit gets real bad you can hit people and it moves them huh oh, that okay. was kind of my no uh, only by like a small movement but if shit gets really bad <laughs> i figure y'all can use it in case it gets really bad and move yourselves okay Thanks, I, addicts. I, Khadija pipes up. I can also, I have enough energy left in me to entirely move us out of sync with reality for a moment to not be hit by lightning. Wait, what? Do I, that. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, no, we should do that. Absolutely. But that most works for only one or two other people. And it's, it's extremely taxing. It does not last more than just a moment. It basically puts me out of phase and I've learned how to transfer it over to somebody else. But that is about the most that I can do. The most I could manage is if something goes terribly wrong, one of myself and someone else would be safe. Yeah, I could feel mm -hmm. like the danger of one person in my in immediate distance. I have a chance. <clears throat> is the lightning chance. being generated by a Numenera? If you, if you mention that, Khadija will say, yes, The we've been studying and she points towards far off in the distance it's much closer now those floating crystalline nodules they appear to be uh they appear to be some form of numenera and i will also say at this point that both of the gloves arrow they are not happy being closer to these things um i have a question how high are those crystals Talking like three stories up in the air. Oh, that's nothing. Um, are are they small or are they huge? They're relatively small. They're just there's a set of like eight of them, like just floating and essentially powering this central hub location, while so, also creating the lightning storms. I can. Okay, I can only do this to one machine at a time, but if y'all can figure out how to move through it, I can try to time their deactivation. I I, I, I can't do anything to get us through it though. Is mm -hmm. are the lightning bolt strikes going up to? What do you mean up to? Could we go over the storm? Like above it? Mm -hmm. Potentially. Someone in chat saying lightning fields forever. <laughs> <laughs> I I respect hey. you, Stegapixel. Much respect. Lightning fields never again. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't think I can get through it. I'm not sure I can either. I was, but I think you have to, you know? I do. I don't really have an option. 
of that I don't know how I have a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you remember the bridge that Penthos made? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if we did the same thing but made a bridge over all of this? Hmm. Hmm. Do we have water around? Do we? Yeah. I can create water. Okay. Because I didn't know if Penthos used the water, like, you know, from the area. Generating Uh, it would be one thing, and then manipulating it would be a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. I wish so we had that would bird. Need to be water around. Well, that bird really hates us now. Um... <laughs> I, I but... think this might be one of our better options just because it feels like anything else is going to risk us getting a lot of. Well, if you could get Enoch part of the way through and then Kadisha, well, I don't know how that works with your stuff, but. If Kadisha could get Enoch all the way through, I, I don't know if we can help with that. Because I can, mm-hmm. like I said, I can turn it off and, and give you some time. Can uh, we try that? Like, turn it off. So Kadisha said two people can be included in that? Kadisha said two people would be able, uh, up to t- two other people max. So we can turn it off, run as far as we can, zip Enoch across. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that could think? work. It's teamwork. You look teamwork, Angela. Yeah. yeah. And I've rolled for the amount of bolts that are going to go off. Um, Truly okay. terrifying. <laughs> That's not a statement you want to ever hear a GM say. No, oh, don't worry. I'm no. rolled for how many lightning bolts are about to hit it. Anyway. Like <laughs> multiple, multiple, <laughs> many. So whenever uh, we hit the security system, it'll turn off the bolts, right? Yep. So, or at least it'll be altered given that uh, you're not oh, going to have access if once he integrates with it. I have a question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was thinking disinactivation. What if, what if I charm machine instead? <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Abra's. <laughs> wait, wait, it's a machine. I, my hand, my machine hand goes, like, I'm a machine dude. <laughs> the eyes like telescope out. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> my mechanical eyebrow. Eh, eh. All right. Um, what is the it's machine? doing that, but it's vibrating like faster than human eyes can see. see. Um, <laughs> I was gonna go with what's the machine equivalent of going a wooga, a wooga. My eye just going. See, yeah. <laughs> see, there's like a little steam port on its head, and it just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna double check something uh, about your machine I, just. Yeah, to be I can read it if you'd like. Uh, you convince an unintelligent machine to like you. A machine that likes you is 50% less likely to function if said function would cause you harm. Thus, if a foe attempts to detonate a bomb near you, controlled by a detonator that likes you, there's a 50% chance that it won't explode. So here's my suggestion. Because what I would be worried about is if I get Enoch all the way over there, I would want to be with Enoch in case there's something we need to fight in whatever this thing is, Mm -hmm. which is kind of my worry. Um, Um, I can put a dome over Khadija of ice just to tide her over until we can get to the security thing and shut it off. Okay. So, Torin, here's the way that I will rule it. Okay. You would be able to interact with one of the of of the lightning uh, fonts, essentially. Yeah. You do not know if by interacting with one, if that's all of the bolts that are going to be interrupted or just that one, that's that's my way of, of telling you that like, it is a, no matter what actions all of you choose here, there is going to be some kind of risk because there's information you don't know until stuff starts happening. So it's a matter of which risky thing do you want to do? I gave you a goddamn lightning field and you're all yeah, no, no, a you're lot fine. of different, a lot of different ways you could handle it. 
but ultimately it comes down to which risk are you willing to take? I have a question. Yes. Um, how high is the ceiling? Like, is it a plates? sky? Yeah. For the plates? Sky. Like, once again, that... like the other sector, this place seems to have its own artificial environment. The sky you were seeing outside of this sector, not, not star, not, not remotely what's inside here. It's its own, like, artificial environment, essentially. Okay. And would you say that these little lightning doohickeys are the size of about two humans? I'd say they're smaller than that. Why? So why? Smaller? Such a specific question. Okay, but <laughs> that's all I want to know. Um, I have like I... a little cipher thing. And if you can, if I say we just do everything because we're going to have to get through this field and there's yeah. going to be multiple bolts. So I have a gravity nullifying spray cipher. Um, and I can attach it or like shoot it at one of the machines and oh. send it floating up into the air. Um, I, I have one other idea mm. that I didn't think about until now. Uh, what if I use it to hurt the others? Uh, oh, so what that? if I do an advantageous malfunction mm. to um, have a numeric device that's okay, used against the malfunctions and it use, uh, might harm the user or one of their allies for a round? Um, here's my suggestion on top of that. What if I supercharge it and then you do an mal advantageous malfunction on it so it can take out even more? How far away do you need to be to use, I'm assuming, Shock or charge is one of the things you're going for, Errol? Uh, charge, yes. If I use Ride the Lightning, I could get up to one of them if it's... That's true. Basically, folks, you have a lot of ideas here, and we are getting near the end of our session. Yeah. Let's, so the last let's do... Let's... I will go ahead and reach out and do the advantageous malfunction. Okay, I'm going to... Be quickly before that, I'm going to... Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Put my okay. hand on. I'm going to shoot all the Gs I got in there. Okay, this thing and Boop. I get back down. I get back down. No, go, go, go. It fires off lightning bolt, a lightning bolt in the other direction, like way off course because it malfunctioned. And folks. Uh, you cannot see this, and when I rolled it the first time, it was Cox, so I re-rolled this D4 for how many lightning bolts you'd have to deal with. I landed on a one. Yes! Yay! Here's the thing. Um, above table, no matter what you picked, if you could deal with one, you can make it over there without any difficulty. Yeah. So Caddox is going, go, go, go. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're just, we're running, we're running. We you see Enoch twerking his way down the highway. Um, <laughs> I shock my glove up, I get that prepped up, and then I'm going to get two water weapons. Here's the thing, though. You do not get to start making the weapons because the glove, the lightning one, is mm -hmm. furious. You hear um, it screaming in your head that's me up there that's pieces of me damn it please what what are you talking about the nodules are pieces of me but you're a glove you're not did you what? think i was just always a glove <sighs> Damn it, please. What are you doing? I'm not going back. I'm not going to be a toy for somebody uh, to use. I'm not going to... It hurts. Ow. Khadijah has noticed the glove, by the way, at this point. You almost everybody has made it to within vicinity of the nodules, like beneath them. And 
but Errol. Oh, Errol is still logo. a bit of distance away. Errol. This is going to be a difficulty three speed defense task. You have you have an inability in speed defense right now because the glove is actively trying to prevent you from doing anything. So it right now, this is a difficulty four task for you on speed defense. Cool. That's 12. That is 12. That is an eight that I rolled. Ooh, I don't have any XP. Can you help? Hold up. How close is she to me? She's she's within, I'd say, close distance to you. So if you All ran right. and did something. Yes, I would like I would like like to foil danger. Which uh, means I use two intellect points to negate one source of potential danger. Um, and I gotta roll against the level of the attack, danger, or creature. I would say for you, it is a difficulty three. So roll, you need a nine or higher to do this. Okay. Um, nine or higher. This is the way. 17! You, okay. Errol, you are you are literally like, fe like feeling your the part of your body that the that the lightning glove is on is seizing up. It's hard for you to move, and you have such a strong awareness that like you hear the thunder go off and the lightning is about to strike, and you just see. Like there, there's a moment of like, well, I kind of deserve this in like the worst way possible. And then you see Jinx. Jinx, describe what you do to keep Errol safe. What did you do? Um, let's see, how, how would we? Okay, well, it's basically being clever with a mundane action. Um, maybe, um, Maybe some of my gear is made from rubber. Oh my god, that would... Like a bag or something, and I'm just, just like holding down. it up in front of us and, and block blocking the, the lightning with yeah. the with the rubber. You you literally, Errol, you you see Jinx taking the time. Like there is no denying someone went out of their way because they wanted to protect you. Like that is not in any way, shape, or form. Something you can deny in this moment. You see Jinx has stuck out her neck for you. It's like, okay, time to get moving. <laughs> it's an immediate reaction that follows. Maybe it was a ring. Uh, yeah, you yeah know I what? We in the rain. start running to cover. Why do you have... Uh, questions for later. Questions for later. Get us in uh, here. Yes. You you see her... Uh, she, you see her partially phase her hand through the ground and draw uh, and seemingly like go around in a circle, like directly below where the safe house that's floating above would be. And you see that there is a platform that begins rising with all of you on it, up to it. Hmm. Despite all of the difficulties that have come with trying to get here and the glove is still mad, Errol. It's, it's both of them feel a sense of rage at being anywhere near this. The party has made it to the safe house where likely some means of accessing the second half of the security protocol will be. And you have Khadijah as a traveling companion now as well. Pentas upgrade. <laughs> like... Aaron? No shade to my good boo, uh, Penthos, but I have to agree. You never yeah, asked me outside of, 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 of one or two things. Because I didn't no, want to intrude to be a DM NPC being like, by the way, I have God mode and can break all of these. <laughs> you never he was a bad bean. No. You couldn't do more to him. <laughs> he, 
it's okay. Pinto's you did horribly awesome. traumatize the poor. Exactly. Family. Yeah. But with this being the case and getting up to essentially what I'm going to call it, it's almost like a floating electrical barrier protected cabin up in the sky at the center of these lightning nodules and nodes with an artificial lightning storm being made up above. That is where we're going to close this session for tonight because I want to give us plenty of time to do uh, wind down and such. But, oh, Lord. Oh, God, folks. We're emotional fine. damage. <laughs> it's emotional Everything damage. Everything is super oh, great fine. and good. And it's so no good. Fine, actually. Yeah, everything, everybody's doing fine. Everything is okay. It is. I mean, to keep it a buck, Enoch's doing great. <laughs> but, like. I'm, that's always the case. Yeah. And I'm not going to tell you what my points are at. For everything mine are very low <laughs> <Yeah>. yep folks uh folks have truly uh uh Time to take a rest and eat a meal mm. <laughs> is that delicious in dungeons theme song <laughs> i don't know no, but, it's it's not. Be. but so folks we're gonna move into doing our our farewells to everyone so i'm gonna go around and give everyone a chance to say who they are one thing you can find you in just hype yourself up a little bit so <clears throat> uh we're gonna start the same way that we started around so uh torin why don't you tell us who you are and where we can find your work yeah Hello everyone, I'm Torin, or Torin Talks Creativity on the internet. Uh, I've been playing Caddix, the curious Forts and Flug Nano, who's totally not up to things. It's fine. Um, as far as where you can find me, I will be on my Twitch channel for most of the day tomorrow. We are doing a charity stream all week from this past Sunday to this coming Sunday for Jack.org, which benefits mental health and helping spread awareness about mental health, especially with youth leaders. So if you want to, please join in for that. Like I said, it'll be on my Twitch at Torrent Talks Creativity for most of the day. And we'll be talking about mental health stuff. Yay! Fantastic. Speaking of mental health and resounding stability, uh, Noelle, why don't you take it away? But enough about my character. <laughs> um, yeah, I am Noelle, she, her. Uh, I will be attending uh, and selling at San Francisco Pride, Los Angeles Pride, and San Diego Pride, as well as a few others across the states. Uh, and you can always follow me on at Noel Eve Palmer on all platforms uh, to see the projects I'm working on, including a little book that's coming up. The book is so cute. Uh, uh, all the folks and, and girls around this world have been seeing stuff happening of stills of that. And it's just the most adorable thing. It, every time I see an update, my heart grows like three sizes. What, what they haven't seen is that it does turn into like an HR Geiger type thing halfway oh, through. Funny. I, I love I love that stuff. I love cute that becomes absolutely horrible. Uh, it you know what it shows range. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of range, uh, passing on over to the fantastic, uh, wonderful Alex. Hi, uh, I am Alex. They them pronouns. I am bopping around the internet streets under Alex AMA underscore, um, and yeah. That's it. Come find me. Next up, with the fantastic, wonderful, uh, character emotionally distressed VV living, I, I assume, for this drama. Uh, uh, VV, take it, take it away. <laughs> absolutely. This emotional damage. Hi, I'm VV. Uh, you can find me, uh, you know, a lot of places at Cervatia or MRS Cervatia. Um, you know, I got a vivatio.com contact in bio where you can find the links. Right now, the coolest thing I'm doing is this. Uh, but I will be in a D and D podcast uh, soon, which uh, is, uh, if I remember right, it is Shadows of Sin, and uh, I'm gonna be playing a hex blood hag, not wannabe because she refused that. Who is basically, you know, a cousin of James, basically. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, that will be uh, hopefully hilarious. But once we actually, you know, upload some of that, you know, it will be on my list. 
we will be looking forward to it. And for those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Angela Lemos Morovejo. I use she, they pronouns, and I have been your world crafter slash GM facilitating uh, the awkwardest of family reunions that I could possibly manage for two of our players. I was going to save this till episode nine, and I was like, nah, let's let them have it. Because I said that I was going to take the gloves off, so gloves off. No, you're, not, you you're not taking the gloves off. It's still... More. You think this now. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, with that being the case, uh, folks, you can catch me. Mostly, this is the, the main thing that I'm working on, but in May, I will be having something come up uh, involving Roll for Good, and uh, I may or may not be involved in something else happening on this channel very soon in May as well. Uh, I'm very excited for uh, things I cannot speak of just yet, but once it happens, I will tell you all, and I will shout with glee like a very... Uh, teenage girl who's just been told that her crush likes her back. You all know that feeling. Yes, it's that cute. For those of you wondering, I am that cute when I get excited. But uh, moving on to uh, equally cute things. So folks, uh, let, let's get into it. We have some things coming up. We have uh, Salva Junior sponsored by Leyline Press going to be happening soon uh, on Saturdays, 1 p.m. ET, 6 p.m. BST. On Mondays, we have Season 2 of Fate, Auriga Stars. Uh, join us in the high fantasy world of Auriga with Disaster Master, Alt Mirage. It's a extremely gay, uh, eldritch horror, body horror, uh, horrific time. I've been led to believe that there was a date episode two weeks back, and then he just got scared the shit out of. So, uh, you know what? The two are equally involved with one another more than you think. Next. Uh, after that... Uh, Wednesday, they've got a ship. Now they have to find a job and keep flying. Join storyteller Anya and Firefly into the black. And at 8 p.m. Eastern, join Roll for Luck, our long-running anchor show. So much sapphicness that uh, you will explode. Join them as they're going through the homebrew world of Amalgarth with Ryu, one of our fantastic founders, as our dungeon mistress. Fridays, obviously, you have me here running for only two more weeks, folks. Two more weeks, and then this Numenera game closes for at least this season. Maybe a season two? We shall see. We'll, we'll find out whether or not. And also, we'll see if we're still going to have the same kind of characters, depending on what happens to some of them. We'll see. Don't look at me like that, Vivi. I promise. I'm being good. Sometimes. And last but not least, at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, there's like a small little show that's happening on our channel, too. Uh, it's kind of a big deal called uh, All Templars Are Bastards, our Dragon Age game run by the fantastic GM Humaloo. Someone else in this cast is over there too. It's not like she's popular or anything and is currently in three different productions all happening. They're they're fantastic. Oh, look, I made them run away. It's the best thing I could hope for as a GM. But all of that out of the way, folks. Tor Torin's fantastic. Torin is in that. We have Ella. We have Nerd on Wheels. We have Alice. Uh, we have Valdrian, and Hamalu is an absolute god tier level GM with so many different things, not least of which including the most dateable NPCs you would ever wish to have happen, because they're all hot and interesting. With that out of the way, folks, we wish you well, and we hope uh, that your weekend treats you kindly that should you take in more stories, we hope that they will be filled with the richness, complexity, and diversity that you know that they need to have to be a good story. We only tell good stories here. I promise. And we will see you all next week as our group continues traveling through uh, this research site and getting into more uh, emotional damage. So take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.
Thank you.